everyone, and welcome to the Wisdom Save Weekend, and we're saving some Kindori. I'm Lauren. I'm your humble DM for this hopefully ridiculously fun game and where we are raising money for Take This, which is an awesome organization that I'm, I'm wearing their shirt for. There you go. I have to oh, nice. raise it up super, super high. Um, so yeah, we are going to be doing some D&D for all of you and hopefully inspire you to donate to a wonderful organization. Uh, but first, before we talk about those donations, let's meet our wonderful cast uh, I'm going to ask you each to introduce yourself and the character you are going to be playing today, starting with Jen. Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Um, I am on uh, my own channel on Mondays. I am streaming with Lauren on Children of Airte on Tuesdays. On Fridays, I am also with Lauren uh, playing some Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel on Radiant Stories on Never Ending. And on Wednesdays, I play Vampire the Masquerade uh, with uh, with um, Play Renegade. Um, I am an author. I re wrote on Candlekeep Mysteries um, and Starfinder and Haunted West, um, and I created the Accessibility and Gaming Resource Guide. And today, I will be adding to my Thorn Whistle Brood um, with my auto gnome uh, Druid slash Fighter Apogee OG Thorn Whistle. Awesome. And next up, Cassie. Hello. I am Cassie Walker. I am a licensed clinical social worker in Illinois, a clinical contributor with Take This, and a one of the writers on um, Into the Motherlands. Uh, and so I do lots of things. You can find me on Twitter uh, at Mental Woke. And today I am going to be playing a thigh cream, um warlock with an ifriti um patron so fire bugs and fire bugs and fire and and i saw them all excited uh because of what you're saying so let's hop on over to jess hey i'm jess and i'm also a licensed social worker who does Yay. clinical practice what a small world. Uh, and uh, I'm Miss underscore Jess 03 on Twitter, Angry Nerd Girl down in chat. My pronouns are she, her. And I'm playing Lilo Organelle, pronouns also she, her, a plasmoid swarm keeper ranger with, and these are all of my tiny giant space hamster friends. Fluffles and Scraffles and Beelbub and Snortblat and and Scrapely Paws. And yeah, that's what I'll be doing. I love it. And Fenway. Hi, everyone. My name is Fenway Jones, also known as Fenway the Teen DM on Twitter and at Jasper's Game Day on all of the social medias. Um, I will be playing Acacius, the GIF Barbarian Ancestral uh, Guardian Barbarian. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, this is the first time playing a GIF um, and this kind of barbarian. So it's all new things for me today. <laughs> all the new things. I'm nice. here for all of it. And last but certainly not least, Sergio. Thank you. Yes, I'm uh, Sergio Solorzano. I'm actually one of the uh, pro DMs with uh, Start Playing Games, one of the uh, other sponsors of Wisdom Save Weekend here. So yeah, we have all kinds of games are running, D&D, &D, you know, Pathfinder, anything you can imagine, you know, a DM playing it. Uh, you know, I'm running through many things myself, getting my Spelljammer campaign ready. I was so excited to play with all these, you know, wacky new things. And uh, my character today will be Caxure Shot, Goblin Sharpshooter. Uh, Goblin from the Witchlight Carnival here to entertain kids and kids at heart with my sick arrow skills. That's awesome. <laughs> uh so we are not just here to run an awesome game about saving a bunch of space whales, but we're also here for doing something ridiculous, which is all on you. That's right. If you would like to make ridiculous things happen in this game, we have a wild space magic table. All you have to do is donate $25 to take this list in your donation, which of these lovely players you would like to have a role on the Wild Space Magic Table. What's on the Wild Space Magic Table? Well, you'll just have to donate to find out. But it's ridiculous, it's all fun. It's all ridiculous and fun. There might be ice cream and milkshakes. You'll just have to donate to find out. 
We will also, during the break, have three giveaways. Uh, three different giveaways. We have a set of dice from Die Hard Dice. We have a deck from Gemhammer uh, Games. And from the wonderful people at Start Playing, we have a $25 gift card to Start Playing. So make sure you stay through the break for your chance to win. If you're looking for information on how to donate so that you can make some of those Wild Space Magic Table rolls happen, go ahead and put exclamation mark donate into the chat for the donation link and get uh, keep a, keep an eye on, I'm hopefully I'm pointing in the right direction, but uh, the goal for our whole weekend is $4,000. And I, I, I think we can, I think we can get closer. I think we can get a lot closer. And and, and yes, I'll just say this out loud since one of my wonderful players just asked this in chat. <laughs> hey, if any of you would like to donate as well, it's all for charity. It's all good. Everyone is welcome to donate in order to make Wild Space Magic Table fun happen. All right. That is all of the, the pre-game stuff. Let's get on to the ridiculousness, which is there's a ship. It's one of a pair. And these are not good ships. They attacked your Kindori. The space whales that come every six months that basically soak up all of the flares coming from your sun in order to feed themselves and keep your planet safe. They come, they are a wonderful sight. They are gentle, lovely space whales. And these two ships showed up and tried to be space whalers. It was the worst. Fortunately, they underestimated how awesome Kindori actually are, and one of them took a battering. So these ships have now come to your planet. One of them has landed and is making some repairs because it seems like they're gonna go try again. And now your, your wonderful Kindori friends are leaving because they just noped out of your system and the flares are coming. The flares are coming soon. And so the five of you have gotten together with a daring plan. That ship, that awful ship that just that just attacked those Kindori that you love so much, you're taking that ship. And after that, you're not exactly sure how, but somehow you're gonna use that ship to go convince the Kindori to come back before the flares get to your planet. And so you're all hunched behind some shrubs, trees, rocks, not really seen just yet, by uh, about 50 to 60 feet away from what you can tell is a damselfly ship. It's small. It's relatively small for a spell jammer ship. You're all familiar enough with spell jamming to, to know what these ships are. You know it's only got a crew of maybe five to six people. And you see one of them actually outside doing some repairs on what would normally be a gorgeous ship that kind of looks like a... Um, a dragonfly with wonderful wings painted in bright colors, except they're, they're whaler co colors, and you're not happy about that. And the member of the crew that's outside right now, everybody give me nature checks to see if you know who or what this is. Oh, and we've already got a lot of rolls. I'm excited. 17. All right, Lilu got a 17. Um, six. Six. Three. Three. I also got a 17. 17. And Apogee? Uh, 15. 15. Um, oh, now it rolls on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cax and Tin, you're really not sure. I mean, there's so many creatures in the multiverse, but these are weird looking starfish plant creature things you're really unsure what they are um the rest of you do recognize them as artooks they're kind of nasty plant creatures they look like um they're large they are 
larger than most of you. The one that's outside is green, and they kind of look like walking starfish with big bug eyes on the top. And you see as their arms come up and form uh, pseudopods in order to start fixing things. Um, You can also see their head sometimes rises out of the center of their body and looks around and kind of peers around. You can see where the, the long tongue of these creatures lolls out a little bit. You know that they're hunters. They they like to hunt and get their get their claws on anything that they can. And, and, and let's just do this right away since you're all kind of hiding back there and you're taking a really good look at these Artooks and figuring out what they are. You all feel a rush of excitement. This is this is something that you're ready to do. And I need everybody to roll a D100 as we've already had donations <laughs> for everybody to roll on the wild, uh, the wild wow. space magic table. <laughs> everyone, um, well done. everyone, and, well and I, viewers. I think we also had uh, another specific one. I think uh, Jess, I'm going to need you to roll twice, actually. <laughs> so I have two for Sergio. I have two for Jess. Oh, two, for, and then oh, I have okay. one for everybody else right now. Okay. Oh, two for Sergio, two for Jess. And I put a tracker in our chat if you yeah, want to follow along oh, in the notes doc. It's right that, up top. That would be perfect. All right. So as you are all hanging out hidden from these creatures, uh, let me go down the line and get some numbers and we'll see what happens. Apogee, what'd you get? I have a 90, nine zero. Ooh. Ooh. All right. We're already getting high numbers. Oh, jeez. Uh, every time you speak, glitter starts to come out. It's just <laughs> like like instead of air or water or whatever you're speaking, just a little spray of glitter. It gets everywhere. My um, words are sparkly. Yeah, it's very sparkly. It's going to end after a minute, but oh, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Um, Tin, what did you get? Uh, Tinashe got a 72. 72. Ooh. Um, every time you cast a spell, you're going to see a swirl of rainbows appear every single time. I'll let you describe every time it happens how those rainbows appear, but every spell you cast is accompanied by lovely rainbows. Um, Lilu. I got a 60 and a 57. Uh, a 60, you... You are suddenly covered in peanut butter. I'll let you decide if it's crunchy or smooth, but suddenly there's just peanut butter everywhere. And 72, you said? Uh, 57. Oh, 57, sorry. I don't know why I heard the other one. Oh, this is super appropriate. Um, You're distracted from being suddenly covered in peanut butter because a, a jug appears in your hands. It just, and there it is. There's this jug. And you look down at it and you recognize the shape. And, oh, yeah, this is an alchemy jug. You're familiar with it. And you pop open the top and it's already filled with mayonnaise. Your alchemy jug can only make mayonnaise. TM, uh, Lauren Urban. There, yeah, welcome. Welcome to my game. Uh, Acadius? Oh, I did not hear that. What would you say? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Acadius, what'd uh, you roll? I got an 87. 87. Okay. Um, there's a moment where <laughs> there's a moment where the the creature outside the space pirate seems to finish what they're doing and heads back on into the damsel fly ship for just a moment, which is really good that for this moment. Nobody seems to be outside to notice the giant battle balloon that suddenly flies over and uh, hangs out directly over you, like 50 feet in the air, and a little rope descends and delivers unto you a nice small cake with a little candle on top that says, good luck on your mission, and Aww. leaves you the the cake, and the rope goes back up into the balloon, and the balloon flies away. And you're all kind of watching this balloon as the space pirate comes walking back out with some more tools. <laughs> I'll let you decide what flavor of cake it is. Uh, and Cax, what'd you yes. get? I also got a 57 for my first roll. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Go ahead and roll that again. Let's get you. Let's get you something unique. All right. Oh, uh, a seven. 
Uh, seven. Oh, um, there's peanut butter and mayonnaise and a cake. I mean, it doesn't surprise you that a swarm of rats would suddenly show up, and they're all swarming <laughs> around your feet. Um, but they're they're all fairly friendly, and you just feel yourself lifted up, and you feel like uh, for the next minute you're going to be able to move extra silently on little rat feet. There and did go. you have a second one? I had a second one, yes. I got a 69. S nice. Nice. Nice, nice right? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, You're welcome, viewers. <laughs> you look back up at this balloon that is flying away, wondering, huh, how these people know to deliver a, a good luck on your mission cake? It had been a gorgeous, bright blue day. And then from the same direction of this balloon, you watch as storm clouds roll in. The weather grows dark. Rain starts to fall. Thunder and lightning starts to flash. And while it's kind of miserable, it might also help with your stealth. You'll have to see. Uh, and Jen, it looks like you just got one more. Uh -huh. One oh, more roll. <laughs> We're getting these all out of the way early. I love it. Right. One more roll. Like yeah. Planning our stealth mission and all this stuff just descends upon us. Hey, listen, so far everything has helped with your stealth. You will be That's surprised true. how much mayonnaise and peanut butter can help with stealth. I'm sorry, what was your number? 88. 88. He's on the piano. Oh. <laughs> you think this mission is extra blessed. You've been given cakes and rats and magic items and all sorts of wonderful things and glitter and rainbows. And then from the clouds, you all watch as three of the Kandori that you are trying to help, that you're trying to see if they will help you to help them go flying through the clouds. You hear the as they sing their song and they all wave at you as they float back up into wild space. And then Thank there's a quiet you. moment as you are now looking through the pouring rain of a thunderstorm out at a damselfly ship and this space pirate who is fixing the ship. What would you like to do? So, uh, gang, I got, got rats on my feet here, so I think I'm pretty stealthy, but uh, I don't know. OG, what do you think? What's, what's, what do you think the plan here is? Are, are those typical shoes? Oh, oh, got some glitter on me there, but um, no, these these kind of just showed up. Uh, usually I just wear some, uh, you know, some nice clown shoes. It goes the whole ensemble I got from the Witchlight Carnival, but ah. no, I think these guys are just kind of helping us out for some reason. Well, we yeah, are lucky. Prefer. I prefer a hamster, but a rat is kind of like a, a, a stray hamster. And in that in that way, I think these rats will be very beneficial to us. Yeah, it feels like I'm kind of walking on air. But, but I guess it, we got to take it, care of this guy in front of the ship first. Will the rats eat him? Oh, I don't think they're that kind of, those kind of rats. They look pretty friendly. They haven't eaten my feet yet. Uh, no, no, haven't eaten my feet yet. They look friendly to you. Would you like to chat with your rats? <laughs> Can I chat with the rats? That's uh, a rat chat. Give me give, <laughs> rat a rat chat. chat. Uh, right. little rat. I mean, they're magically summoned rats. You, you look on down and they all kind of obediently look up at you. And one of them in a tiny little rat voice says, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, they're talking. Oh, I didn't know I could do this. Um, can you guys distract that, that big guy over there? Well, you have to come with us, but absolutely. All right, I'll come with you. I'll watch. I'll have oh. a fun time. Okay. Uh, all of the rats lift you up, and you very stealthily, in fact, I will give you advantage on this stealth check, <laughs> move towards the Artuk that is currently working on the ship. Nice. Just floating there, like, hey guys, I'm going hey guys, I'm floating. Let's see, stealth, uh, 20. Uh, natural or dirty? Uh, dirty 20. Awesome. You. Uh, are lifted up and through the rain, the rats carry you uh, all on their tiny little feet. Uh, it really feels like you're crowd surfing in a very weird way uh, <laughs> as you as you are guided over towards this Artuk. The 
the big creature that's working on a part of the wing seems to be just finishing up does not notice you. The rats set you down right next to this space pirate and then they all swarm around these starfish-like feet of this pirate and start making lots of noise, which you hear as them going, yay, yay, <laughs> yay. And the Artuk looks down and is like, what? Hey, ah, and you hear all these weird noises coming out. And it seems very distracted. Gesture to the rest of the party, like to the, the door of the spacecraft. <laughs> like, okay, we can go. <laughs> Come along, everyone. Is there anyone else around? Is he the only one we we can see? He is the only one that you can see. You're all pretty positive there's probably a couple more in the ship. A ship like this, like I said, the complement on it is five, six, maybe seven people. Uh, and space pirates tend to to be light. This this kind of ship is a damselfly ship, and it's fast and light. It's a strike kind of ship. So you're pretty sure there's at least a couple more inside, but this is the only one outside. All right. I would like to approach stealthily. Sure. Go ahead and give me a, a, you just give me a stealth check regular. I'm just going to make the DC a lot lower because this uh, being is currently distracted by rats. It was a one on the die, which brings me to a seven. So (laughs) I I do have one house rule and you can do with this whatever you like. So my usual house rule is if you if you roll a natural one, I'm going to ask you to describe why did you fail at this? Now, it is completely up to you. It is all narrative. Whatever you say goes. You do not have to do something horrible if you don't want to. But I I will ask, why did you fail at the stealth check? I'm going to say that I am sneaking my way in. And then uh, either the currently distracted guy or a couple folks from inside the ship are like, do you smell peanut butter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna say the one outside. The one outside okay. is... is ah, and then you watch as the head of this creature spins around, sniffing at the air. Uh, and as the group of you are moving up towards the ship, towards the entranceway into the ship, it seems to peer at you and goes, Hey! Hey, get away from my ship! Uh, what would the rest of you like to do in this moment? This is not your ship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would you like to Jedi mind trick this? I would love to know if you've got that spell. Because <laughs> I want that spell too. This is not the ship you are looking for. No, and I'm (laughs) definitely not a face. I don't even have a face. (laughs) So I cannot do that. Okay. Telepathically, in his mind, I just say, they're supposed to be here. Let them pass. You you watch as this starfish-shaped creature, the head cocks a little bit and looks around confusedly. Uh, roll a deception check. Okay. Can I help with that since I also have telepathy or has my previous miserable failure prevented that? Uh, I would love to know how you're going to help and we'll see. Okay. Just if I can telepathically sense that brain stuff is going on, I would be like, yeah, yeah, we're supposed to be here for sure. For real. That explains my score of an eight total. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I want to I want to hear this interaction for a moment and then we'll see if I'll let Tanache roll again. So uh, Tanache says, oh, let them pass. They're supposed to be here. And then you hear the creature out loud say, what, what? What? And then uh, Lilu and Tanash, what did the two of you say telepathically? I'm going to keep going, uh, or at least I'm going to try and keep going uh, just um, with, with him and say, I said they're supposed to be here. Let them pass. Peanut butter is what space, wild space, <laughs> smells like now. And therefore, <laughs> is nothing out of the ordinary. 
and, and everything is proceeding as normal. I don't even know what peanut butter is. What? What? <laughs> and it's oh, looking peanut butter is delicious. And it moves up to you, the rats parting as they finally scurry off their, their job done, uh, moving up to you. And it's less about distraction and more th- this creature is just really confused. It's hearing stuff in its head and talking about peanut butter. It sees you covered in the peanut butter. Uh, Tanache, I will let you roll that deception check one more time. Okay. Um, and then tell me what, what you say to this very confused plant creature. 18. <laughs> All right, what do you say? <laughs> so, okay. Can, so I can, can I hear Lilu too or no? Uh, Lilu, would you like your telepathic communication to be heard? Uh, Sure. It's by anyone with telepathy. There you go. Okay. You can hear each We're other. We're having a group chat. So, group chat's going right. on. Yeah, uh, so, so Acadius, in- Cax, and Apogee are just kind of standing far enough back that not to be noticed, looking at the three oh, of no. you all staring intently at each other. Yeah, so Tanache is is this um, purplish, um, big, compound-eyed um, bug creature and with, like, full mandibles and everything, right? So there's no mouth moving or anything, so it's not like he knows what their um, voice or anything sounds like. And so just in this very authoritative, authoritarian kind of voice, it's just a, do I really have to repeat myself again? Deal with the peanut butter, have a taste, let them pass. And Lilu will just extend a peanut butter covered pseudopod and like boop the dude on the nose. (laughs) Delicious. I never got a chance to ask, is it is it smooth or crunchy peanut butter? Ooh, I'm gonna say it's that like kind where it's the crunchy peanut butter already mixed together with the jelly. So it's uh like peanut butter and like cherry uh balsamic jelly. Perfect. The gourmet. You boop the snoot of this artuk. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it and leave behind a little a little streak of that tan peanut butter with the red jelly on it and its eyes cross as it looks down at its own it's less of a nose and more of the point of the star-shaped head and a long gooey tongue comes out and is hitting itself in the face trying to get at the the peanut butter on the nose and you all think you have a moment of this creature being ordered to be distracted by going after its own nose and peanut butter. What would you like to do? I sure hope it's not allergic. Let's go. <laughs> I hope it is. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, am I going to have to roll damage. for allergies? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I'm neutral. Let's go. Come on, come on. <laughs> Wait him on the ship. Under the ship. Uh, yeah, if or you attempt at least, if you see the hatch that uh, you can all walk up into the core of this ship, if you would like to to run on inside. Yeah, absolutely. Any more stealth checks needed? Not yet, but I'm glad you asked. You all <laughs> dash up into the inside of this damselfly ship, and while. None of you have ever been inside one of these ships. You are conversant enough in wild space and the way things work to know the general layout, especially of a small ship like this. You've actually entered onto what would be the main deck, um, which fortunately is empty at the moment. And this would normally be where a lot of the, the cargo is being stored. This is right where the gravity plane is. In front of you are the is the ramp leading up to the top deck, which uh, that's where like the captain would be. That's where the spelljammer helm would be. That's where a lot of any of the rest of the crew would probably be. And then there's another place to go down into the forward part of the ship where some of the armaments would be. Um, but at the moment, as you're looking around, it's kind of like you're in a big cargo bay and there's not much here. Everybody give me perception checks. Uh, Tinash? Ooh, dirty 20. Nice. And Lilu? 23. 
And Acacius? I got uh, a natural one uh, for two. I'll come back to you in a moment. Cax? A natural one for five. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll come back to you too. Apogee? Eleven. All right. Uh, Dinashe and Lulu, the both of you take that minute to listen because you obviously don't see anything. And you can hear movement up the ramp uh, where you expect the top deck would be. You think you hear two creatures? You hear two distinct voices. And most of the time when these are took, when they are communicating, um, they have their own language and I'm going to guess none of you speak Artuk. Let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> also, let me know if you're one of those people who can just speak all languages, because I know they're out there. Uh, but you don't understand what they're saying, but you definitely hear um, a, a higher voice and a lower voice having what sounds like an argument with each other, but you can't hear exactly, you don't, don't know exactly what they're saying. Um, Apogee, you, you can't quite hear anything, but you can tell by the look on some of your friends' faces uh, and the way they've cocked their head that they're hearing something. Uh, Cax and Acacius, I would love to know why the two of you are, what What are the two of you distracted by that you don't hear anything? <laughs> it seems like a, like a cargo hold, right? Yes. So I imagine there's like loot and cargo basically in here. <laughs> I mean, if you'd like to go, if you'd like to be distracted by looking for loot, sure. That's what I think. I imagine that like, yeah, I'm smelling this peanut butter and just like, all this peanut butter talk's got me I'm a little hungry. Let's just take a quick snack before we continue. I think I have some bread around here somewhere. It's like open, like opening crates, trying to find the bread. Awesome. I need you to roll me a D100. Acacius, <laughs> what's got you distracted? Bread check. Acacius, Acacius is uh, obviously a very large um, hippo person. So um, they're still pretending to like sneak. So they're doing like the sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> and pretend like they're they're not good at it at all yeah um but like they're they think they are um and so they're they're very focused on being sneaky um which both are failing so you know you've played too many of those video games where all you have to do is crouch and yeah. then you're supposed to be <laughs> sneaky but yeah. it doesn't it doesn't quite work right <laughs> uh cats what'd you roll uh 73 73 uh, you open up a fairly large crate, and inside is a small elephant. You think it might be like a a, a dwarf elephant? Um, and it looks up at you, and it says, Oh, thank you. And it climbs out of the crate and walks out of the damselfly ship. <laughs> um, Arctics are plants, right? Yes. Well, um, they're they're considered... Um, yeah, they're plants. They're creature plants, but they're considered plants. So would speak with plants let me understand what they're saying? You know what? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and cast that so I know what they're up to. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, Apogee pulls out a, a uh, kind of like a, a walking stick and goes, what if my family members gave me this? Wonder. And then sort of plants it in the ground. Um, and I'm going to use my staff at the Woodlands to cast Speak with Plants. I love it. Um, Lilu and Tanash, you kind of take a moment to to indicate to Apogee that you're hearing these voices. And now clued in, you hear these two, um, you hear these two creatures talking. And the lower voiced one sounds like it's probably the the leader is saying, I need that fixed quickly. The other ship isn't going to wait. And if we want any of the blubber from those Kindori, we need to get off this planet now. And the higher voiced one is going, yes, yes, sir. Absolutely. We're working as fast as we can. There's only the one that knows mending and, and they're outside doing what they can. Unless you know mending, there's nothing else I can do. I'm just, I'm just here. I'm just it, ready to, to take off when you're ready. I need you to be ready at a moment's notice. What is taking them so long? I'm gonna go outside and check on them in a moment if they don't fix, if they don't finish things. What would you oh, like to so do? so they are going to be coming down soon. Hi. We should be ready. One is mending things. They are not very nice. I think it's a good idea to be prepared 
Pour something. I'm going to hide behind a crate. All right. Go ahead and give me a crate stealth check. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. That is a two. Oh, okay. Uh, You're a Thrycreen, right? (laughs) Yeah. So Thrycreen are able to change their carapace to different colors. And what I imagine is you've picked this, like, gorgeous color, whatever color you'd like, and it just so happens to not at all match the crate you're behind. So you get behind a crate. But, but yeah, you-, you know what it is? I I right now am this am this marvelous like ombre purple, like multimodal purple color because I think it's really pretty. And I'm so busy trying to get ready, I forget to tr- to change my color. Mm-hmm. And so you clamber kind of on top and behind this crate, thinking you're all blended in and no one could notice you. And uh, Tanashi is just kind of sitting on a crate. <laughs> what are the rest of you doing? Uh, Acacia's crouching in the corner. All right. I also I need a crouching corner <laughs> stealth check. <laughs> crouching corner right. stealth check. <laughs> natural 20 for a 21. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Acacius, you are you're unseen, unheard. You figured out the crouching thing. It's not it's like you have to crouch from the knees. How do you hide you in the corner so successfully? What do you do? Um, I mean, uh, you sh- Uh-oh. Oh no. They See, they're they- just trying to find we lost you for a moment, a, but you're uh, back. Like a, perfect. Yeah, my internet is still decided to be at one bar. Um, so, you know, Ooh. it's a it's a fun Your fun internet time. is helping um, you hide. But, <laughs> <right>. Yes. Um, <laughs> they've, tra- they've found a shadow um, and, like, are, like, up against the wall, like, crouching against the wall. Um, I, they were attempting to do the same thing that they did on the way in, but did a heck of a lot better. And I'm going to say you even found the the corner that's behind Tanache. And so it, it's both you've done an excellent job of finding the, the most in the corner corner and also are being uh, covered up by a large crate and a large thrycreen. Um, Apogee, Cax, Lilu, what are the three of you doing? Uh, Apogee, you are oh. muted. Yes, I am. Uh, I would like to prepare my shillelagh, please. Sure. Tell me how you do that. Uh, I take that staff and I sort of swing it. And Apogee is tiny. Like Apogee is very, very, very small um, and resembles a halfling a little bit more than a gnome, um, even though uh, they are an, uh, even though she's not a gnome. Um, and um, the, the staff is kind of extends almost taller than than uh than apogee is as she sort of kind of slams it back into the ground again um and it almost like a telescoping as the shillelagh appears that's cool excellent and that only leaves us with cax cax first i want to know what are you doing uh yes so watching the elephant go by (laughs) just kind of butter to myself like i think uh, all these animals are a sign so I think I know what I have to do. I reach into his bag uh, and he pulls out an ivory goat uh, figurine of power and throws out the goat of terror. <laughs> so appearing now is this like big shaggy white uh, goat with little butterfly wings um, strapped on top of him. Cax is this witch like carnival goblin. So he's got this like colorful jester outfit also wearing his blue butterfly wings. So he climbs on top of the goat and tries to be intimidating with the goat of terror as he rears back with his butterfly wings. <laughs> I love it. And something about the magic of summoning your goat here in this damselfly ship gives you a little bit of an extra thrill. And I need you to roll a d100 as we've had another person <laughs> donate oh, yes. for a roll on the on the random magic table. Thank you. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for this uh, 47. This 47. Um as you jump on top of your goat of terror, epic, gorgeous butterfly wings spread out. The goat rears back on its hind legs, and you are a Franz Fazetta painting in in motion. The goat comes back down, and 
for the next 10 minutes, you can only speak in questions. And so as the Artuk elder, uh, Apogee, what you hear is them say, I'm going to go check on them right now, comes trooping down the, the ramp, uh, all of its pseudopod legs. It's kind of walking like an octopus would, but it's large. It is a creature that is, it's almost as big as you on your goat, uh, comes walking down. It stops at the bottom of the oh, ranch. I didn't get to go yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Like, Wait, I had a thought. It, it's just hanging out in suspense. I'm sorry. The Arctic <laughs> Elder stops at the yeah. top of the ramp and takes a moment to like adjust his military uniform. I'm so sorry. What do you do? <laughs> ah, uh, Lulu wanted to, if I can do both of these, uh, I will. If not, I will just do one. Uh, I wanted to... Uh, smoosh myself in a way so that I look kind of like a puddle of clothes uh, and uh, as my pseudopod, but also use beast sense and send one of my hamsters to run upstairs and see if there is anything up or around there that we're not aware of. I love it. I'm gonna say you can do both. So you squish on down and send one of your little hamsters on up. Um, and so I'm going to say this is happening as the the captain is coming on down the ramp. Your hamster scurries on up. And so what you you see and hear through your hamster's eyes? Yes. Awesome. Uh, your tiny little space hamster, dee, 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 unnoticed, crawls upstairs, up the, the ramp, and they this see... This is Skimble Shanks. A railway. <laughs> yes. Skimble, sh- Skimble Shanks, the brave, goes... Uh, running up the ramp to the top deck where they see it is, this is where the Spelljammer helm is. There is a a big window looking out on the field of your planet. Uh, The wings of this ship on the front are are arrayed. It it would almost be gorgeous if it wasn't such a dire situation. You see two of these Artuk, the one that is starting to come down the stairs. It's this gigantic, big green starfish plant creature. It's adjusting this uh, uniform on what would be its torso, and its head is like squished down into its torso. So it's just starting to walk in that weird way that octopus do, except much more upright. And there's a second one that you see seated in the actual Spelljammer helm that is more of a, a, a grayish color, a little bit smaller. And it's got several of its arms like wrapped around the back of this, uh, what you do recognize as the helm of this ship, as it's got its head fully extended up and over the back of the, the helm. Uh, you don't understand what it says, but Apogee does hear this creature say, okay, I'll stay right here. And then the head turns back around to look out the window. Um, as the captain comes on down, sees uh, Tanache on a crate, sees Apogee with their um, ready for battle, sees Cax on an <laughs> epic mount, does not see Acacius and Lelu. Stands there for a moment and says, hey, what? And only Apogee understands it, saying, what are you doing in my ship? As the rest of you hear, (laughs) are you scared Uh, of me? (laughs) They would like to know why we are here. (laughs) Uh, Oh, goodness. Oh, no goodness. Cax, roll a uh, intimidation check, and if your goat gives you bonuses, take them all. <laughs> I don't know if your goat gives you bonuses or if it's just for flavor, but uh, well, the goat says that uh, they succeed in a DC fifteen wisdom save or be frightened. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, then I it's will a fear. It's like a fear aura. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Well, then that's gonna be me. Uh, let me roll. Uh, it stops. And as it's gazing at all of you and announces this, and once again, Cax, you don't understand what it says, but it locks <laughs> eyes with your goat and you watch it quiver. And you watch it, it doesn't step back, but it seems to lean back a little bit. And if a, a, a starfish plant could look scared, you're pretty sure this is what it would look like as it failed miserably. Okay. <laughs> and Apogee, you hear it say, what is that thing? Oh, gee, is it scared? Did I do it? 
Ah, uh, yes, it it seems to be frightened. We should. What are you doing in my ship? It wants to know why we're in the ship. Hell, I I establish connection with it, and I just with 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 them, and I just say, our ship now, please leave. Ah. <laughs> uh... Go ahead and give me an intimidation check. We're not quite at okay. advantage yet, but okay. But I like then, where we're going. Um, if I'm doing intimidation and I know it's seen me and I can tell that it's already scared of one thing, before I roll, I would like to bonus action cloak of flies. Ooh, tell me Ooh. about cloak of flies. Um, what what this does is once per short rest is a bonus action, uh, you surround yourself yourself with a five foot aura of flies that grants you advantage on intimidation checks uh but disadvantage on all other charisma checks and any creature that starts its turn within the aura uh takes plus two poison damage wow all right yeah. uh so the flies that appear are those um they're those awful uh, white white flies that devour plants and so this creature is yeah. just terrified and but they're they're swarming so fast because i think this is a spell so they're swarming so fast that between them are little bits of rainbow <laughs> i love it give me your your intimidation <laughs> check at advantage i love it okay all right that's the first one where's the second one Oh my god, the digital dice don't like me. Oh no. That's a 13. Okay, all right. It's you're half successful, I'm going to say. So, this is obviously intimidating. The goat is intimidating. The, the, all of you are intimidating. Um and you can tell that this creature is terrified. Whatever is going on, there is just fear in its countenance, on its planty face. But you are asking a captain to abandon their ship. And so there's a there's still a little bit of steely um I will do whatever you want, but this is my ship. I'm gonna go closer to it so I'm within five feet with uh um with with my focus in, in one of my smaller arms and a dagger in in and my hand axe in one of my bigger arms, and I'll say I mean you could stay forever. It it does lock eyes with you and you could tell that it just, that's not an idea that it really likes. But uh, what are the rest of you doing in this moment? As you can see, this, this creature is almost convinced to leave, but it's not quite there yet. Well, the universe has a plan. There is always a reason. And what is the reason that all of you are here on my ship? Well, you will have to wait to discover that. It will be presented to you. I, if if this is a, oh, it's not really a mutiny. You're not supposed to be on my ship. If if this is a hostile takeover, that I want to know now. And uh, Cassius and Lilo, are either of you doing anything? The both of you are fairly well hidden, still. I would like to uh while remaining hidden if possible because i am just a puddle at this point use mage hand to open my jar of mayonnaise and just start spreading mayonnaise around the on the ground <laughs> absolutely are you doing it uh where would you like to do this uh in relationship to the captain uh around his feet maybe because he asked why we were here and clearly we are here to bring him the gift of mayonnaise I mean, the gift of mayonnaise is always a welcome <laughs> gift. All right. You are uh, splashing mayonnaise all over the floor around this creature's feet in nice and slow and careful. And it is so distracted by uh, what's going on with Cax and Apogee and Tinashe that it doesn't even notice. Uh, Acacius, what are you doing in this moment? Um, Acacius is holding back a laugh. Um <laughs> Aren't we all? And is very entertained by all of it. Um, but uh, is preparing for anything that gets 
any more hostile than, um, you know, intimidation on our side. All right. All right. So you're holding your action to take action if, if necessary. I yes. like it. All right. As you are preparing, as the mayonnaise is spreading, as all of this intimidation is happening, we've reached over $1,000 on the donations. So we are now one fourth yeah. of the way there. Yay. All right. Uh, and, and we got there because, uh, Cassie, I believe you have a role on the, the Bizarre Magic Random Table. What did you roll? 15. Uh, 15. Fifteen. Mm. Uh, you stand intimidating, coated in flies, holding your focus, steely-eyed, looking deep into this this plant's eyes, in, so intimidating when you are now a stuffed toy. <laughs> you, are, oh, no. you are an exact replica of yourself. <laughs> You can still do everything that you can normally do. You are the same size and everything. You are just now a stuffed toy thrycre. But you're big. You're like one of those old FAO Schwartz sized teddy bears. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just turn to, turn so to OG. This is perplexing camouflage. So, just turn so OG my, compound, my, my compound eyes just go even more dead and glassy. Oh. <laughs> As these rain, like these flies with rainbows arcing between them are flying around me. And they're and all plush toys. A- they're all tiny little plushies of flies. <laughs> And I am just a giant, terrifying bug build a bear. Build a bug. Build a bug. Yeah, build a bug. Build a bug. I love it. I love it so much. The the captain is still intimidated, but also now incredibly confused. It does not. It it can tell. It thinks this is a further intimidation tactic, and it's working. But it's also not sure why. He looks so comfortable. Did did they mean to do that? Where's where's Acacius? Looking around. And it's, when you call out where's Acacius, it uh, makes this creature take the moment to furiously glance around. Um, And I'm going to make it make a dexterity saving throw because there's mayonnaise all over its feet. Let's see (laughs) what happens. No, it... It whips its head around looking for uh, what Apogee and Cax are talking about, slips on the mayonnaise, and falls directly into the fuzzy face of Tanache. What would you like to do as this creature just... I'm going to stab it! (laughs) Go ahead and roll an attack! Oh my gosh. (laughs) I feel like this feels like an attack. Yeah, and I have my hand axe, so we're just. I love yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Knife wielding build a bug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. In wild okay. space, you can get some really wild things. <laughs> that's right. Build a bear is nasty. Uh, that's a that's only a ten to hit. Uh, you do not hit. It's it's more of a glancing blow. The the this plant has a pretty thick outer edge, but. Uh, what you do do, instead of actually piercing it with your hand axe, is you kind of push it off of you so it doesn't fall on top of your your stuffed form, and it lands on the ground, flailing. Uh, would anybody like to do anything else as Manny's goes flying in this moment? Uh, I have a yeah. net. Can I just, like, throw the net on, on it? <laughs> sure. Go ahead. And roll, straight in the mayonnaise. <laughs> roll me a net attack. Or do, am I making a save? I know it's a net attack. Yeah, okay. uh, twenty-one to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. What happens? Sorry, so I just well, right up on my coat and just gotta like, throw the net casually over it while it's flailing in the mayonnaise, and now it's restrained <laughs> until it makes a strength save, a strength check. It's it'll, successful. I'll get that chance in a second. Uh, Acacia, does this? It does. Set... Oh, sorry. It it does take two poison damage for being in my aura, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. Um... Yeah, they can be poisoned. <laughs> I'm like, can plants be poisoned? Yes, they can. All right, you Ooh. see it flailing around. Acacius, does this set off any action, or are you still just trying to hold a snicker? <laughs> it, I, I I am failing at holding the laugh now. I am now full laughing. All right. But um, 
I will also to do the uh, take my action. Um, I'm going to activate with my bonus action my Eldritch Claw tattoo. Okay. Um, nice. And so that allows, as a bonus action, I can empower the tattoo for a minute. For the duration, uh, all my melee attacks with a weapon uh, can reach a target up to 15 feet away from me um, as inky tendrils launch towards the target, um, and I do an extra 1d6 force damage. All right. You you summon this epic reach weapon. (laughs) I'm going to to use my great axe. (laughs) Still wow. You have advantage, too, because of the net. You do. Uh, Apogee and Lilu, I'm going to be asking what you want to do just after this, so I'll, I'll get to you in a moment, and then I guess we'll either roll initiative or this thing will be uh, incapacitated or running. We'll find out soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. With advantage, I got a natural 20. Yeah. Hey! Go ahead and roll that natural 20 damage. So I will do 2d12 and 2d6. I love it. And remember, oh, no. those of you at home who would like to join in on the ridiculousness, uh, for $25, you can make one of my players roll on this bizarre random magic table, this wild space magic table, and see what happens. Maybe mayonnaise is in their future, uh, or more mayonnaise is in their future. Yes, Acacia? Ugh. Uh, that is 33. 33 damage. Oh. You, you, you wail on this thing, and it it's stunned for a moment by just the sheer force of your hit. And uh, the thrashing kind of slows for a minute as you almost see cartoonish stars over its head. Uh, Apogee, what are you doing in this weird mayonnaise net moment? Well, it, it seems like the proper thing to do here is to continue assisting my friends, so I will also run in with my shillelagh. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> Go ahead. Give it to me at advantage. Um, awesome. Ooh, 25 to hit. <laughs> Absolutely. You bonk it with your shillelagh very easily. So that is eight damage. Feels like there should be more on top of that, but maybe not. Shillelagh is is good, but it's not necessarily like the high high level. Oh, it's because so. usually this at a higher level, I use Polar Master with it. Ah. Um, mm. that's what I do with this. Uh, but no, that's that's what I will do for now. Yeah, and then um, uh, I still have a bonus action to if I want to. Uh, no, we're good. All right, for for now. Just as this creature seems to be starting to shake off the effects of Acacia's whack, you come in and give it an extra couple of seconds of... of oh, I don't think so. Glitter, sparkles, glitter. <laughs> Bonk. It is now I, covered I, I in glitter. I should that my shillelagh is, uh, almost looks like swirling, like a condensed galaxy night sky. That's what the, the extension Ooh. on the shillelagh looks like. I love it. So that's also swirling and glittering. There's very sparkly. Between Tinashe's rainbows and your glitter swirls and everything else going on. It's it's a colorful event going on in in, in the ship. Lilu, what are you doing in this moment? Uh it takes me an action to put myself together. So I will emerge from the mayonnaise pile that I have created and uh pick up my rapier and my shield and uh make a couple more arms for myself so that i have a bow in case he runs (laughs) and summon my uh critters to me and i i can't make them do anything to him because i can't attack him on this turn so i will instead just uh the hunters mark him to get ready Awesome. And go like, uh, so are we fighting now? I thought we were convincing him to leave. You don't necessarily, you're not able to necessarily do anything but put yourself back together, but all of a sudden you've got a weapon in one hand. You've got a hand and a weapon in one hand and a hand and a weapon in another and hamsters. And you're next to plushy Tanache, who is just covered in plushy flies and all this going on and cacks on top of your your terrifying goat <laughs> creature. Um, this art took 
uh, finally stops thrashing uh, inside of the net covered in mayonnaise and peanut butter and a goose egg on its head. And it goes, all right, all right, the ship is yours. Just don't attack me with any more mayonnaise. And it starts one way to convince something to leave. And through the net, it starts to just drag itself out of the damselfly ship. And and eventually, the net is left behind. May the galaxy treat you well. Better than this, at least. (laughs) (laughs) And it has left the ship. It has a companion upstairs. (laughs) It has a... There is someone upstairs. We've yet to know if it's a companion. (laughs) Of... But there's at least someone upstairs, and now there is just a smear of mayonnaise and glitter on the floor from where this Artook has left. We just should clean it. that up. <laughs> Gimbleshank oh. said that upstairs there's uh, the a helm with a, a gray friend. Maybe it, it could be of use. Well, the, I wonder present. if you speak enough into. Tanache's, uh, or no, not Tanache's, the Lilu's um, jug, if it, we could make glittery mayonnaise, and then it would be more everywhere. If you want Are we going to do that again? And just point to the mayonnaise smear on the floor? <laughs> Is this like <laughs> a thing we do now? <laughs> Uh, I've never done it before, but it was super effective. So now I have learned that mayonnaise is, is an a, a excellent deterrent against uh, our ducks. My job here is done. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's, I, it's like how you can use it to, to eliminate certain things as well. Mm-hmm. You can use mayonnaise as a... There we go. For stuff. <laughs> More useful than from here. I do not understand. This is... This is bizarre, and this stuff you it, call mayonnaise is not Tinashe as still a plushie? It's strange. Uh, yes, at this moment, Tanashi is still a plushie. <laughs> and it has changed my composure. <laughs> Technically uh, and to- literally. <laughs> <laughs> Two donations that combined form $25. They are both from anonymous sources. Ooh. So I don't know if you want to combine those into a spontaneous occurrence. I love this plan. I'm going to roll um, a d6 and see who gets to roll on the random magic table. That Beautiful. is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right. Uh, More plushy time. That's a 6. Lilu, go ahead and roll me a d100 for wild space magic. As you all are wondering what you want to do with the creature that's up in the Spelljammer helm. So 14. yes, thank you. Thank you for even even small donations help. This is all for an amazing cause. Oh, yeah. Please keep them coming. Oh no. Okay, 14, you said. I love when the GM oh, says, like the, oh no. Oh no, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, 14. It's always reassuring. <laughs> you all are looking around at the mess that you have made, the successful mess. And from up in the Spelljammer helm, uh, you all hear the creature call out, Apogee, what you hear is, "If I, I think I'm alone. Help, 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 help. Space clowns, help! And all of a sudden, uh, uh, you hear oh no. uh, the squeaking of feet as, uh, uh, how many was it? Um, Lilu, roll me a d4. <laughs> Not alone anymore. Lucky number three. Three space clowns come troopsing down the ramp, <laughs> their shoes squeaking loudly on the floor, all of them in garish uh, clown makeup and bright colors. Cax, being from the uh, Witchlight Carnival, you're used to clowns being just wonderful purveyors of joy and pies. And these are <laughs> horrible, the, the nightmare versions of what you know as something that should bring joy to everybody. They arrive with what looks like toy guns that are that would normally in at the Witchlight Carnival be filled with glitter and water and fun things but the evil grin on their mouths is indicative of something worse and each of them are going to take an attack um they have come to return your customary shoes uh <laughs> let's see they're going uh, to go after uh tanache apogee and 
Acacius. Actually, no, uh-huh. they're, they're going to go to Nashi Apogee. Do they slip on the mayonnaise? Uh, not yet. We're going to get there in a second. Uh, to Nashi <laughs> Apogee and Cax, because one of them looks at Cax on the uh, on the terrifying goat, but recognizes a fellow person from a carnival and is going to take aim at you. <laughs> it's like a moment. Yeah, it's like, wait a second. Uh, game recognize game, but I'm now going to go carnival. Uh, I'm super going to shoot you. Why are my dice not rolling? Uh Okay, here we go. Here we go. Are you guys here to take my shoes? <laughs> all right. Uh, Tanashi, does a 16 hit you? Yeah. Uh, all right. And uh, Apogee, I don't think a 10 hits you. No. And Cax, does a 16 hit you? Yes. Okay. So Apogee manages to get out of the way. Tanashi and Cax, you're both going to take seven psychic damage. Uh, and I need both of you to make a wisdom saving throw. Space clouds. Space clouds. Space clouds. <laughs> Not bad. That's a woo. 19. 19. And Tanache, I see a woo. No. Not not 20 for a 24. Ah, epic. Neither of you, you feel for a moment as this ray hits you and it infects into your brain. It hurts for a second and then you feel the urge to laugh and you suppress it. You're, no, this is, I'm not laughing at these space clowns. They're going to laugh at me. And you, you prevent it from uh, making yourself be hilariously funny. See, everything is hilariously funny. Uh, Tanache, with a natural 20, I'm going to say that not only do you resist this, but you get to immediately react. What would you like to do as these space clowns appear? Awesome. Infestation. Cool. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is What does that I, do? So infestation um you cause a cloud of mites fleas and other parasites to appear momentarily on one creature you can see within range it's a 30 foot range so i want to do the one that hit me okay and um it they have to pass a uh level or a 13 con save or they take 1d6 poison damage and moves five feet in a random direction um, if it can move and its speed is at least five feet. Um, And then I would roll a d4 for the direction. So here's what happens. They roll a natural one. And uh, because these are creatures who have been summoned by the the spell jammer up, up top, What happens is the little mites and fleas that you summon, which are also still plushy, bounce off of this creature. It is horrified and starts to move backwards going, (laughs) and the shoes squeak under its feet. And that's when it slips on the mayonnaise and it hits the other two of its friends. And as they all tumble down in a pile, they all vanish in a in a cloud of silly string <laughs> to the benny hill theme <laughs> and upstairs up the ramp from the spell jammer hip <laughs> from the spell jammer helm you hear well crap i'm All going right. up there you're going up there okay. yeah can, can All you right. walk in plushy form i guess you're Ironically enough, as you are wondering this, as you take a step forward on your plushy uh, Thrycreen have like claws, as you take a for, uh, uh, step forward, you are now back to your normal self. <sighs> um, no. Um, oh, sorry. Are you? Uh, is now a good time to surrender? You hear from upstairs. Well, Apogee hears from upstairs. The rest of you hear. <laughs> they would like to surrender. Excellent. They have realized our superior prowess as space privateers. Privateers and and protectors of... of I've been confronted with their own guilt at their behavior. No, mostly mostly I'm just afraid of all of your mayonnaise. (laughs) Or that. You better be. Got a full jar of it. Get out. No, actually, it's empty now. I can't do that again. If it's you are surrendering, <laughs> you may leave unharmed. 
Uh, as you all come up the ramp to the top of this ship and you see the final Artuk extracting itself from the Spelljammer helm, giving you all a wide berth, it, it backs away and around you. And as long as no one's going to stop it, it is going to leave. And the last thing uh, Apogee, you understand it to say, but as it, it uh, gets around you and starts to back away and it says, all right. The bounty is yours. Just let me live. Ah! <laughs> and it runs out the damselfly ship, leaving you in possession of the bounty, your ship now that you can use to fly into space and see if you can save some whales. And that seems like a good place for us to take a brief break. Oh, yeah. So everybody can have a chance to stretch and get some water and uh, for those at home to do the same thing. So uh, I'm, I'm going to switch over to a screen that uh, these fine people can now walk away from. So uh, if everybody on the screen can mute yourselves and go take your break. Meanwhile, I'm going to come over here because before I go take my break, I want to say that we're running our giveaways. So let me get that started. We have three giveaways that we are doing during the break um, for Die Hard Dice, uh, Gemhammer Deck, and a $25 Start Playing gift card. Um, in order to enter this giveaway, you're going to want to uh, put into chat. Uh, hold on. You're going to want to put something into chat as soon as I get the giveaway going. What do you mean there's no eligible? Come on, give me... It's telling me there are no eligible people for this giveaway, but I know there's eligible people for this giveaway. Hold on a second. I'm going to get this giveaway going in just a moment. Uh, 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 uh. Mm? It says there's so many eligible people. Uh, the giveaway is going to be for, there's three different things that you can get. One is for a set of Die Hard Dice, one is for the Gemhammer deck, and one is for the Start Playing gift card for uh, $25. I just need to make Nightbot do the thing and then type it and say, Yeah, so the problem I'm having at the moment is that uh, Nightbot is telling me that... Oh, there we go. I think... I think I got it going. Okay, in order to enter the giveaway, you need to put in exclamation mark Kindori. So K-I-N-D-O-R-I. -I. Well, it says someone already won the giveaway. Wait a second. <laughs> that is not what I wanted it to do. Hold on. You know, we weren't having any, any technical difficulties until this moment. And then and then everything had to go wrong. So hold on a second. Let me. We want a keyword. All right. Everybody go ahead and put uh, exclamation mark K-I-N-D-O-R-I -I into the chat right now in order to enter for your chance to win one of the three gift, uh, one of the three things, the Die Hard Dice set, the Gem Hammer deck, or the $25 Start Playing gift card. We're going to let that run for uh, a couple of minutes while we are on break, and then I will come back and we will pull three winners and... Thanks to everybody who has donated so far. Remember that $25 will get uh, one of our lovely players a roll on the Wild Space Magic table. And as you can see, uh, there, there's, a lot of, there, there's a lot of fun that happens on that table. Anyway, go ahead and enter for your chance to win. And uh, meanwhile, we'll be right back. about the old prophecy and we all sing songs at the top 
way to save the Kandori. We just finished up our giveaway, and uh, three winners were pulled, who are winning the Die Hard Dice, the Gemhammer deck, and the Start Playing gift card. Our absolutely amazing moderator, Keith, is in chat, who will be contacting the winners to get their information. But there is still some more fun to be had. If you are here in chat, remember that for a $25 donation, you can have one of our uh, wonderful players roll on the wild magic, uh, random magic table, which has already caused a little bit of hilarity. Just, just a tiny bit, just a little bit of hilarity. I've gone ahead and put the Tiltify link in chat. And meanwhile, last time we left our heroes, our heroes have commandeered the damsel flyship, the Bounty. They've taken it from the space pirates who had originally had control over it. This is one of two ships that was part of the, a crew of space pirates who were attacking the Kandori that usually come by this space system. Because you see, every six months, this star starts to go into a period of solar activity that would be dangerous to this planet if it wasn't for the Kandori coming on by. Except these space pirates have ruined everything. And now the Kandori are noping out before the flares have come. But part one of our team's daring plan has worked. And they now have possession of a spell jammer. And so the five of you, the last time we saw our heroes, are standing in the um, the main deck of this damselfly ship. The helm is there in front of you. Um, I'm going to say all of you intellectually know what is required to helm a spell jammer, but none of you have actually ever done it before. What would you like to do? I have proficiency with space vehicles. I'm sorry, for a second, I thought you were going to just say, I have proficiency with space. Okay, exactly. That's I amazing. <laughs> just period right there at the end. <laughs> I, I, I want that. But I didn't know that came with the spell jammer stuff, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. All right. Uh, I mean, Acacius, if you want to tell that to your crew, I, I will let you all decide yeah. who wants to do what. I will. Um inform everyone that I have experience on space boats and proficiency with space boat vehicles. I'm just cleaning the mayonnaise off my net with press digitation. So <laughs> just like, go for it. It's all yours. Do you still have your terrifying goat? Exactly. It's like up to three hours. So yes, you still sitting on my goat, washing the mayonnaise off my net. <laughs> oh. I believe in you, Acacius. You got this. And Lilu will pop out her wild space orrery. Just go like, I'm happy to help navigate in any way possible. That was my- As am I. And I up. project out my star map. Um, and I have navigators tools as well, if those are Same. helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Tadashi, what are you doing in this moment as orreries and star maps and goats are happening? I am best with helping with people, so. I am also going to join in the prestidigitation and I'm going to drop my cloak of flies. Okay. Your cloak of flies, which uh, I'm going to say for, for fun, continued to be plushy up until the very last minute just because there were no <laughs> other enemies around. Uh, it's all these little <laughs> plushy flies just like... All right. Acacius, you take a seat in the spell jamming helm. Uh, it takes but a moment to attune to it, and you now feel the damselfly under your control. Um, Lilu and Apogee, would the would both of you give me? This is I. This is a question that I now have to figure out how 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 navigate space happens. How, what do I want to give you? Give me either nature or um, perception checks. Is your or perception? Yeah, whichever is higher for for each of you. So you can try to help Acacius navigate towards the well, wherever you're going. Let me put it that way. Not so good. That was a <laughs> terrible number on the die, but it brings me to an eleven. Okay. And apogee was a five. 
okay, we've got an Ori, we've got space navigation, we've got tools and everything. Unless unless the navigator's tools help give advantage <laughs> on it. Unless the goodies that we're using to help us navigate and such. I think it technically gives you proficiency. However, to make life easy, since the two of you are working together and also Tanache and Cax are making sure that you're not covered in mayonnaise, I will give you both advantage on this. <laughs> Thank you. Just clean up mayonnaise off everyone. Oh, that's not much better. <laughs> I mean, um, the worst thing about an Ori is an Ori covered in peanut butter and mayonnaise. Oh, God. Oh. That brings <laughs> right, me yeah. a 19. So and it's a lot. It's an eleven for me. Okay, um, Apogee, you create uh, this star chart, which is gorgeous. But unfortunately, you don't exactly know where the the ship is that's still out uh, circling the planet or the Kandori. So it's a little hard to show where to go. But your star map is very accurate, Lilu, with your Ori you're able to kind of look at the map and look at um, a couple different ways that you can navigate and ping where certain celestial bodies are and uh, stuff are. And as Acacius feels control of the damselfly come under their control, you can figure out where a couple things are in the system. You now know uh, between the bunch of you where the sun is. You think you still have about a couple of hours before the uh, the flares start to get bad. So you still have a little bit of time. Um, you now also can sense the space galleon that is circling the planet. That is the other ship in this pair of space pirates. It is a galleon. It is much bigger than the damselfly that you currently are on. And Acacius, you would know that while the galleon is much bigger and much more dangerous than your ship, you're faster by by two thirds. You could outrun this ship as, as long as you're smart about it. Um, and finally, you do sense on the very outer edge of the system about to leave to enter, uh, about to leave wild space and enter into the astral plane the Kindori, the whole pod of Kindori that you are used to seeing. There are six adults in this pod, and they are very slowly heading away in the wrong direction to come back and feed on your star. What would you like to do? Um, I mean, I think we just, we, we go, we go now. <laughs> <laughs> um we go we go as fast as we can towards the Kandori. Um I mean hopefully we can outrun them. And then when we get there we can figure out what we're gonna do on the way back afterwards. All right. Uh unless anybody else has any other suggestions, you are in control of the of the damselfly. You close the back hatch and the ship retracts its little legs and the wings start to go and it rises up into the air and very quickly heads up and out of the atmosphere. Um, I would love to know, because as I said, you, you all now know where this galleon is circling the planet. It's way more dangerous than you, but you're a lot faster. Are you trying to stealthily get away from it? Are you going to try to just drag race it out of here? What would you, what would you all like to do? <laughs> You say drag um, race out of there. It sounds so appealing. <laughs> I'll let the pilot I mean, we decide. We have but... the glitter and we have the rainbows. We're set for drag race. <laughs> Just say. Oh, wow. Go. There you go. <laughs> if you'd like. Oh, the wordplay. Yeah. I love it. I will say if you want to drag race, essentially what that means is you'll get to the Kandori much faster because you won't be spending time trying to sneak around the ship. But there is a chance this galleon might get a shot off or two at you. So. What would you like to do? Would you still want to? Are we drag racing? Drag race. Drag race. I love it. Your yeah. ship enters the atmosphere, uh, heading off into the wild space around your uh, around your planet, and you see it. You see it off in the distance, very quickly heading towards you. It's this massive galleon, wood panels, giant sails, flying 
a flag that none of you are familiar with, but very clearly looks probably like pirates. It must be pirates. They're all pirates. Um, and you see painted on the side of this ship as the cannons come into view, bird of prey. And Acacius, you do hear as you are getting ready to screech off into wild space uh, over the communication stone that connects these two ships together, you hear a voice. And you all understand this because it is not a Artuk. It, it's speaking in common. Uh, and you hear, Ay, what took you so long? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I can. You've been. I can you've, handle this. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've all you've all heard over the stone this this other ship calling out. Oh, what took you so long? <laughs> Looking at everyone, uh, they would oh. like to know why we have taken so much time. I feel like well, is just longer than expected. We are en route now. Wait. Who's this? This doesn't this doesn't sound like Quelleth. Ah, there Quelith was an the... incident with mayonnaise in Artuk. <laughs> <laughs> at the at uh, as you speak the words mayonnaise, uh, a strange energy fills the damselfly ship as both Lilu and Acacius are rolling on the Wild Magic Surge table. Thank you everybody <laughs> oh. who donated at home. We are now $1,100 and uh, let's see. All right. Let's see what happens now. Lilu, what did you roll? Two. Ooh, okay. Oh. Uh, as you're hearing all of this happen, you're looking over at Cax, who is still astride this epic goat which looks you in the eyes and goes, Meh, like goats do, because it's not one of those screaming goats because I have a voice that I do not want to lose today. And something okay. about being mounted on something as, as epic and terrifying appeals to you. And then all of a sudden you are on a horse. You are on a <laughs> flaming horse. You are now oh, riding wow. a nightmare, which for those at home that don't know, it's a giant black horse oh. with manes of flame. And it is your horse now. Are my hamsters also on the nightmare or are they like around the nightmare? What would you prefer? Tiny I, nightmares. Are they on tiny nightmares? That's what I was thinking, right? Tiny. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> they are all on tiny nightmares. You are on a yes! massive nightmare and you look over at your tiny little hamster friends and they are all upright it's on like tiny, pig tiny nightmares. little nightmares right. and they are all... It's, it's the best. <laughs> this is truly the greatest day in the history of plasmoid hamster relations. <laughs> oh. Look up at Lilu. Oh. It's like, okay, uh, okay Lilu, you'll have, you have to show off. It's, you know, just what <laughs> <laughs> The goat nods approvingly, like, yeah. yeah. Acacius, what'd you roll? I got a 100. Oh. You got a 100? Oh. All right, so here's the deal. On a 100, you suddenly see a deck of cards appear in front of your face. It is an interesting God. deck that you've never seen before, and you feel the urge to draw a card. Now, here's what I'm going to say before you draw a card for those at home. This is actually, yes, the deck of many things. But I, for those that have seen my wild magic table before, it literally says you draw one card from the deck of many things. If this happens during a charity game, once you see what the card you've pulled is, you can choose to put it back and redraw one because I want this to be fun. So I need you to roll me a d20. What are you saying? Do you need to roll? A d20, please, to see what card you oh. pull out oh, of the deck. Oh, does Jen have the deck? Jen has oh. the deck. Jen has the deck. <laughs> I got lucky number 13. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As Jen shows that demon card. 13. Uh, let me pull this up. Okay, so what I'm going to say, it's not good, but it's not the worst thing ever. Do you want to keep it or do you want to draw again? Since this is a charity game, I will give you the option to draw again, but I won't tell you exactly what it. happened. Let's, uh, 
Let's draw again. Let's draw again. Let All right. Go. go ahead and roll your d20 again. <laughs> How about a 17? Okay. The third and fourth. <laughs> Okay. Not sure if that's worse or better. Right. <laughs> okay. You draw this card and you see on it, it, it's appropriate as you are attuned to this spell jammer and you're flying through wild space and you see the gorgeousness of wild space around you, the stars, the, the array of nebula, and a comet goes flying by as you've drawn the comet card. So you, if you single-handedly defeat the next right hostile on monster on group uh, or group of monsters you encounter, you gain experience points enough to gain one level. Otherwise, the card has no effect. So what I'm going to say for, for the purposes of this, since you are helming the spell jammer and you've decided to drag race your way, uh, your way away from this galleon, if you're successful, I'm going to let you level up to level six right now. Oh, Ooh. Wow. <laughs> and your friends can help you, but that's that's what I'm going to say. So um, as this comet flies through your vision, you feel ready. You are ready to race this thing out of the system and get to York and Dory. Um, how would everybody like to help in this moment? Uh. <laughs> I can help with... Uh creating extra hands. Okay. And using my navigator's tools for guidance. But if there are any extra buttons that need pushed, I can press all of the buttons. Just tell me how many how many arms you need me to make and I've got it. I, I love this. There's no extra nice. buttons to push, but I feel like with the Ori and with your guidance, um, you're able to help uh, Acacius with the navigation parts of this. Um, everybody else, what would you like to do? Everybody's got a, an opportunity to help Acacius drag race away. This is a long shot, but can I use my performance to make uh, sounds like the Pirates of the Aliens, I forget their name now, the Starfish, but to kind of talk back to them in there, like in an impression of their language and hope they don't shoot us. Hope I have learned enough from their, them to make some approximation of don't shoot on one of you. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna say. You do all know that the voice you were hearing from the galleon was mm -hmm. not one of these Artuk. It, it oh, was okay. speaking in common. Sure. However, if you would like to do exactly what you were doing and do an impression of the Artuk to confuse the people on the other end so that <laughs> it takes them an extra moment to react, give me a performance roll. Try that. Hmm, I like this. He's a carnival performer, so if, he's, if he picked up some tricks, let's see. Yeah. All right, 18 plus 6, 24. It's uncanny. Apogee, it's, you can still understand Speak With Plants, and Cax is doing an uncanny impression. If it wasn't for the fact that they were accidentally speaking gibberish, you know, they're basically just saying words in Artuk, but, <laughs> but the words are really clear. But they're basically saying, ship usually pod of those large hamster. Like, what? <laughs> Speaking of which, Apogee, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Apogee, um, <laughs> is there anything you would like to do to help out in this moment? Yes. So there are a few things I can do. Oh, uh, okay. I can use my star map to help give us guidance. Okay. I can also try and use druid craft to sense sort of the astral tides and such to help try and, and surf the gravity waves and whatnot. Um Space, weather. <laughs> I, I love that. Since Lilu is already helping out with the navigation, uh, druid, let's let's do a druid craft. Give me a nature check with advantage. Okay. Um, that is a, a 15. Awesome. Yeah, you reach out the winds of wild space are still nature. It's still nature, even if it's, you know, emptiness and void with a little bit of wind. And you absolutely can help Acacius find just the right space lane to be in. Um, and yeah. in addition, mm -hmm. um, I would like to, um, you notice there's a, there's a pattern that almost looks like freckles all over um, Oji. And 
those suddenly begin to twinkle with light. Um, and that light sort of projects out almost like those star map um, globes that you can put in like little kids rooms and things. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and activate my dragon starry form Ooh. to give uh, it to turn intelligence wisdom, and wisdom rolls into tens if it's below a ten. Okay. I'm going to say, boost. so this uh, will be a constitution roll, but I'm going to say this will work for that too. Um, constitution saving throws, uh, it's usually for concentration, but yeah. It, I, I'm going to say it works for Acacia's too. So cool. Acacia's can no longer roll anything less than a 10. Finally, Tanache, what would you like to do? I, this is a little bit of a stretch, so. I mean, have you let me know, seen all the stuff but... you've done so far? <laughs> <laughs> But I figure since we're in the ship and the ship is, you know, mutual part of us, maybe I could cast Expeditious Retreat on the ship. I love it. Ooh. Here's here's <laughs> what you do. You don't cast it on the ship. You cast it on Acacius. Because Acacius oh, okay. is controlling the ship. So you reach yep. out and d describe how you cast this on Acacius. Yeah. So you see Tinashe um the the lower arms start to kind of move this black orb around and then you hear some like clicking of their mandibles and with a trail of rainbows behind um a a kind of hazy energy encompasses uh Lilu and Lilu, you now feel like you can uh, go fast. Oh, you mean Acacius? Acacius is the one in the er, spell jammer. Sorry, Acacius. Yes. It was such an I'm epic a, description that yeah. I'm on a nightmare. Of course, I could go fast. <laughs> <laughs> the flames automa automatically make you look like you're going fast right now. Excellent, uh, Acacius. You feel all of this help coming from your friends. Um, with the expeditious retreat, you know that when you move, you're now going to move even faster than before um, with Lilu and Cax and Apogee with their help. Uh, I'm going to give you not only advantage on this roll, but we know that you will not be able to roll less than a 10. What I need is a constitution saving throw, and this is going to be a contested roll against my galleon to see who who goes, who gets away first. Give me your roll. So constitution saving throw is going to be... Okay, all right. It's a Sounds 16. Like oh, it's Acacius that's also, rolling it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's Acacius. Yeah, sorry. Acacius rolling it. Your uh, help is meaning they can't roll less than a 10, so... Got it, sorry. That's okay. Is it a constitution saving Yes. throw, right? Yep. Okay, I got a 24. <laughs> My galleon got a 13. So Acacius, please describe yeah. as you shoot off into wild space... Uh, what does it look like when you leave this galleon in the dust? Um, well, obviously the trail behind us is completely made out of glitter and rainbows. And so like we're leaving a slight trail of glitter behind us and they just get this like giant puff of rainbow and glitter in their face. Um, and then they see us like speeding, busting tail out of there. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the galleon is still, the commander of this galleon is still going, Wait, what? From what Cax was saying, you feel all of this extra oomph from your friends and the galleon hasn't even started to turn around when you almost enter hyperspace. It's so fast. Boom, gone. <laughs> okay, just go ahead and level up to level six, which D&D <laughs> will make slightly easier. As yes. your ship rockets towards the edge of wild space, Apogee, you feel your your starry dragon form helping, and you feel a connection to Acacius and the ship, and I need you to roll a D100 as we've had another person donate for another one of these um, bizarre random magic occurrences. 75. 75. Um, in front of you, a uh, light appears. And for a moment, you think it's just part of your starry form. You think it's a, just another one of these lights. But it gets a little bigger, and it takes on a shape that you're not familiar with. It's a 20-sided thing. 
it's glowing. And you now have a glowing D20 in front of you. Um, what Ooh. color is it glowing? Uh, I think it is glowing. It's like a, that, that, um, like a duochrome purple and green looking back and forth. It absolutely is. It's fairly large. Like it's a, you could put this in, hold this in one hand and it would be kind of filling your hand, but you, you grab it out of the air and it, it's got that satisfying weight of something that you know you could roll, but is not so heavy that it's a problem. And yeah, you now have a glowing D20. Sweet. For reasons. Is that uh, an inspiration? Um, oh. No, for the moment, it's just super cool. <laughs> Cool. And, and maybe if you roll it, other things will happen. Meanwhile, <laughs> would you like to roll the d20? Um, sure. <laughs> you, you give it a little underhanded toss. And the interesting thing about it is it rolls in the air. You, you don't have to put it on the ground or anything. Maybe it's something about being in wild space or whatever. As it rolls, um, what color does it change? Uh... I think the purple becomes more intense and, and glows more and more as it rolls. Yep, that's exactly what happens. Um, and yeah, as you play around with it, every time you roll it, it changes color. And it's never quite the same color twice in a row. I know a diamond that's very similar to this. It does, <laughs> it does kind of remind you of the auroral diamond. <laughs> I've had this on my list for, for like a year and a half. But now That's it's a amazing. D20, wow. yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> As you're all looking at this rolling D20 in the air that's changing all colors, and we've got flaming hamsters and flaming horses, and I almost want to make your goat flaming, but uh, only if your goat wants to be, and all this stuff going on. <laughs> the, you see in the distance, um, very quickly approaching, because Acacius is just booking it, your ship approaching the pod of Kindori. There are six of them, and while you all know what Kindori are, some of you probably have never seen up until maybe like an hour ago when the, the three moved through the atmosphere for some reason and kind of blessed you on this trip. They are gargantuan beings, some of them large enough that you think people could live on the backs of them. You've heard, actually, of people making... Uh, houses on the back of some of these older Kindori. They look like massive whales in blues and some greens and dark blacks. No mouth, but glowing eyes on each side, three of them. And they sail through the cosmos in lazy waves, moving their fins. Um, they are moving at this moment, away from your son. And you do know that they need to go in the other direction. But something has convinced them to leave. What would you like to do? So because they're celestials, they're not animals. That's correct. OK, so speak with animals would not. I'm going to say speak with animals would not work, but I'm open to how you would make it work with a bunch of celestials. I'm not going to rule it out, but if you have, if you or someone else can convince me to make it work with celestials, considering what these creatures are. No, I have another thought. All right. I have another thought. All right. Uh, as part of uh, my trade-in for primeval awareness thing. Oh, no, this is part of being telepathic. I can do detect thoughts. And I would like to read the thoughts of these Kindori and try and determine why they're leaving and if there's for good reason. And then maybe see if I can keep probing into their minds, convince them to not bat. Okay. But if they have a good reason, then we'll just learn something. All right. Um, how close do you have to be to the being to read their thoughts? Uh, uh, 30 feet. All right, Acacius, you're going to have to get real close to one of these Kandori. It's going to it's going to be hard because this is even the smallest one of these space whales is dozens of times bigger than you are. You think you can do it, 
But moving that close to one of these creatures, the air envelope around you and the air envelope around them and the gravities are going to start to intermingle and things could get weird. Do you want to do it? That's up to you, Acacia. I can also just uh, yell at them in their brains from 60 feet away, <laughs> if that seems I, safer. Even I can 60. do 120. Well, you don't have to show off. Not all of us <laughs> were born with, with telepathy. Some of us just Aww. learned it from our friends, and it's always harder as a second language. No showing off says the person on the, you know, flaming horse with miniature flaming horses around it. I just mean, that, that's, <laughs> that's just a style choice. Tanache, <laughs> Tanache, you're 60, you're 120 feet. Is that detect thoughts or is that communication? Like what, what will that let you do? That, that will let me establish the telepathic bond. And so as long as they understand at least one language, I can talk to them. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I want to make this work, but I'm going to say, you know, these are not creatures that speak any languages. But they, understand any. they don't, sadly, no, they don't. But here's what I'm going to say. Uh, if you want to work with Lilu to <laughs> read their thoughts, as it were, uh, Acacius, if you're willing to get close enough, um, it will be, you can be within 60 feet and the two of you can work together and it won't be quite as dangerous. Huh? All right. If you're going to do that, Acacius, what I need from you is I need another uh, constitution saving throw. Um, your friends are still helping you, so I'll let you do it at advantage. And the DC will be a little bit lower because you're not moving within 30. You're moving within 60. Well, uh, I got a 20 this time. Natural or, a, or dirty? Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Excellent. You move the damselfly uh, within 60 feet of one of these Kindori, one of the really big ones, because it's moving a little bit slower, move up towards the front and you angle the ship so that your gravity planes are the same. So all of you kind of feel the, the gravity shift just for a moment and then settle again. And the light coming off of their eyes kind of starts to illuminate the inside of this uh, this craft as Tanache and Lilu mind meld with the Kindori. <laughs> um, I will say that the both of you, since you're working together to hear this, <laughs> sorry, I'm just, I'm reading chat and I'm loving that too. Um, <laughs> the, the both of you peer into the mind of this space whale. And because there is no language, you don't hear thoughts, but you feel a, a deep rumble, like you're next to a bass. And it's, it's more that you feel the air vibration moving through you than actually hearing anything. And as this low washes over you, you see an image of the pod of Kindori being chased by two ships, a galleon and this damselfly. They're coming in close, starting to fire weapons at one of the others. You're seeing this through the eyes of this Kindori. So you see five others around you as the one that you are reading their thoughts continues to move. And you see they get these two ships, the space pirates, angle their way towards the closest Kindori to where they've approached from. And you immediately know this is where they went wrong, because the closest one to them is the biggest of the Kindori. And it turns and smacks at these two with its gargantuan tail, sending the damselfly tumbling through wild space, forcing the galleon to turn, and the two of them flee, heading back towards the planet so that, as you now know, it can land and do repairs. But as this massive creature has done this, it's now turned away from the planet itself. 
And since it is the biggest one, the others follow and they start to move away. And that's what you see. Think they're afraid. What about you, Tanache? Uh, I think we need to get them to turn back and maybe ask nicely and instead of attacking them to do it. it would, that seems bad. Maintaining the connection, I just kind of want to telepathically go, hey, buddy, know what'd be cool? Turning around and eating some sunshine. <laughs> uh, Good sunshine right over here. Here's, here's what I want to say. You know these don't speak a language, so it's not <laughs> necessarily going to understand you, so I need you to paint me a word picture. What image do you send to this Kindori to exp to basically convey this message? Uh, so can, can I help? Would you like help? <laughs> I, uh, I, I would love all of you to help in whatever way you can because it makes me happy. I love help. I want to start okay. by just uh, showing uh, like uh, a wall appearing in space <laughs> in the direction that they're going. <laughs> And uh, one option the Kidori do is flat, and the other option is the wall on one side and a big ball of light over here that's flashy. And then showing Kidori going over to the flashy and doing a slurp slurp of the yummy light. <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, Tanasha, you wanted to, to help? What were you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... Tanashi is also used to being in societies where standard words aren't a thing. And so I think that Tadashi sees what Lilu's trying to do and refines it into this um, story of feelings and pictures and and vibes um of them turning to get the food of the light and also of like safety um that we have cleared the way they came and that is now okay to eat okay as you're sending these images and feelings and sensations on over, uh, Acacia's Cax, Apogee, is there anything you would like to do to help out with this? Um, or would you just like to be moral support? Because that's- Let's say, yeah, me mental speaking isn't Cax's specialty. He's just look at Lilo and Tidahashi and just be like, I will say you are within 60 feet of this Kondori and it's it's wild space. So if there's things you would like to do, uh, it, it's not like space space and where if you nothing can happen between here and uh, the Kondori. So if you want to do anything, we'll make it happen. <laughs> Air envelopes are here. Yeah. Um, as may I? I want to kind of tweak Druidcraft to space Druidcraft. <laughs> If I mean, that's okay. I I'd love to kind of use it almost to create a like a starlight to guide them. Okay. Basically, yeah. create like a, a path in the yeah, in the astral like a, plane, a, sh and... a shooting star kind of thing, Ooh. leading them. I like because the I don't want star. it to be something that I I don't want to like step on the toes of 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 dancing lights or something like that. You don't want to step on dancing toes. No, um, <laughs> no, never step on dancing toes. But I like the shooting star idea because it's kind of like a quick arrow, drawing the eye. So so yeah, absolutely. Um, Cax, Acacius? I mean, I guess, I don't know if this works, but I guess since this is a, a thing he does now, uh, I'm gonna see if I can use performance to make whale sounds, make friendly whale noises. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh, you've got to get actor, the actor feet. So you should get yeah, the voice changing. This, right? yeah. yeah. You know what, though? I love it so much. Give me a performance. It's so check. good. Give, give it to me an advantage because you've now heard these Kandori and felt, felt their rumblings through your chest. 
Also, if anyone wants awesome magical music to listen to, check out the Spell Jams playlist that Chris Funk curated oh, yeah. for Spell Jammer. There's a song called Forgotten Land that's this cool, like, space thing. Nice. Let's check that out. It's yeah. really well with what we're doing right now. Nice. All right. So 10 plus 6, 16. Nice. Okay. Um, because of the resonance that you need in order to get that whale sound, it's you and your intimidating goat kind of working together um, <laughs> because it's a much larger being than you. Uh, it, much, much, because you're a goblin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you yeah. actually get the goat to make this rumble. Uh, and, and you're coaching them in order to vibrate in just the right way. And all of you feel uh, the goat like a double base on wood making the entire ship can I, just can the I right do something way. else? Oh, because wait, 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 as wait. an auto gnome, I don't have to be able to breathe or anything. And we have the gravity plane mm -hmm. related to the ship. Mm -hmm. I actually want to go outside to be casting my druid craft. So I'm watching okay. this all from outside the ship. And maybe mm -hmm. preferably upside down because that's fun to do with gravity planes existing the way they do. <laughs> um... <laughs> You can definitely be outside. So the top deck has a place in where you can go outside because the, the air envelope on this ship is, it's the whole ship is encased. So you can be out amongst the stars. You could, because Acacius has done such a good job of flying next to this Kandori, if you wanted to, and if you're good at it, you could jump across and land on this Kandori into their air envelope if you really wanted to. Oh. Um, I will say because Acacius did such a good job, your gravity planes are the same, but if you did want to make the jump. I don't I don't need to, to go bother the Kandori. I just kind of want to watch what's happening from a little <laughs> bit right. closer. Okay. And just sort of be out on the deck of the ship as I'm casting my starlight. You absolutely can, as you think about how much fun it would be to jump on over to one of these space whales. Acacius. I think I'm getting a DM hook that I should jump <laughs> over to space whales. I, I, um, I you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just sure, putting it You out. know what? Why not? Why not ride a giant space whale? As long as they're okay with it, I'm, I'm here for it. Well, here's what I'll do. Uh, before you make the jump, Tanache and Lilu, as you're in uh, communication with this creature, uh, I'd like one of you to roll a persuasion check at advantage. What's your persuasion? Which one of us is higher? Um, mine is a very powerful zero. <laughs> okay, mine's a mine's a plus two. So, so I'll put I'll... that on you. You you did okay. better with the uh, feelings and the emotions, and the, I was you know it's it's telepathy as a second language is hard. Whereas the digital uh, Zira, dice don't like me. Zero has a, a, uh, a telepathy is a first language, so that absolutely makes sense. <laughs> What'd you roll? Uh, the digital dice don't like me. It's only a 10. Only a 10. Okay. I was with advantage? Oh, no. Yeah, you have advantage. I didn't... Oh, okay. Hold on. And guidance if you, if you need it. Yes. With advantage, it's a 10. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, with a ten, <laughs> you you don't convince it. the The sound coming from Cax helps calm it. Acacius is flying, you know, very steadily and not making any sudden moves. And the thoughts and feelings that you're putting out towards it calm this Kindori. It is no longer afraid of it had been attacked and now this other ship is here um and apogee you see from your position they watch the shooting star go and you see as how they're moving that it's a little more relaxed so they are no longer afraid but they haven't quite been convinced to turn around and go back just yet uh apogee make me a nature check Uh, 16, 17. You think if you uh, jumped on over and went for a ride, you're so small and these things are so big and now they're calm. They're at the very least not going to mind. Okay, sure. <laughs> there is a plan for all of this. I'm supposed it to have a plan. It is charted in the stars. 
I feel very called out as a DM. Oh no. <laughs> the voice in the sky has given you a vision, yeah. <laughs> no one has to know what the plan is. <laughs> we discover it as we go. The plan is people are going to donate $25 and so we can have lots of uh, wild surge searches on my table. Wild surge and, on a whale. Yeah, yeah, on a whale. All right. Uh, so, uh, Apogee uh, backs up and then <laughs> I need you to make a uh, either an athletics or an acrobatics check to see how well you fly through wild space. That will be an athletics. Um, may I give myself guidance on? This? Sure, you know it's coming. I'll let you. I'll let you guide yourself. Okay. So that's a 10 plus a d4. Uh, yes, I, I am seeing this in chat. If you would like the whales 12, to roll the wild 16. magic surge, I will accept that the whales need to roll <gasps> on the table. <laughs> but you have to donate $25 and say that you want the Kindori to roll. This is a 15, and then I'm going to add a built for success on there just in case. Um, because I was designed for these things. Um, so that's a 19. With a 19, uh, all of you watch as OG leaps off of the damselfly ship. Oh, gee. <laughs> and you said it was athletics? I did athletics. Athletics. Mm -hmm. It is faster than any of you think should be safe uh, as they shoot off the back of the ship and then turn gracefully in the air and land kind of just under the uh, the right flipper of this Kindori. And you're, you three-point superhero landing on the top of this Kindori. Oh, and we already got one. We already yeah, got yes. one. As you land, <laughs> as you land on the, the Kindori. Uh, Acacius, would you roll a d100 for me? <laughs> yes, I will. For, for my whales, because someone was very nice and took my bait. <laughs> 43. With a 43. Took your plankton. <laughs> took my plankton. Uh, with a 43, OG, as you land, the wild space around you fills with, for a moment, what you think are shooting stars. It lights up in a multitude of colors. Uh, roll 3d6 for me. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Six, five, three. 11, 12, 13. 15 oh. gems of a variety of colors and sizes, but all about 50 gold pieces each, suddenly appear around this Kindori as, as it has now blessed your landing with a shower of gems that... It sails past that go floating off into wild space, but leave trails of rainbow color behind. Oh, it's so pretty. They're happy we're here. There was a plan for this. Yes, there absolutely was a plan. <laughs> Just like mutter under my breath, oh my God, OG is right, there was a plan. <laughs> All right, what's next? Everything was programmed. <laughs> the algorithm knows all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you've you've calmed the Kindori. Uh, OG has taken a little trip. The rest of you can see this. What would you like to do next? I guess I'll just kind of, I'm still doing whale sounds. I'll just yell out in between whale sounds. <laughs> OG, I try to rodeo and turn him around. Woo! <laughs> Would you like to go on closer and and make your whale sounds on top of a Kindori? Why not? Yes. <laughs> I'll leap over. Awesome. Seeing uh, that it's safe. Sure, it's safe. Uh, does your <laughs> does your terrifying goat have its own stats, or do you use your stats when you are riding? It is. Your it's a giant goat. I love so. it. I need your giant goat, because I'm assuming you're riding it on over to the space whale, yep. to give me an <laughs> athletics or an acrobatics check to jump <laughs> on over to the whale. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. 16. Awesome. Was that athletics or acrobatics? Ac athletics. 
Same thing. Your terrifying goat kind of leans down a little bit and gives a good push <laughs> off the damselfly. And then you use your momentum on the back of the goat to spin in air in wild space and land not too far from OG. And as you land, you and your goat continue to make the noise. And the Kandori that you land on starts to sympathetically vibrate with you. And now the three of you, and, and OG, you're feeling this through your feet. And so you, you kind of unconsciously start humming under your breath the same note. All of you are humming this very low resonant note that is it's intimidating and satisfying at the same time and Lilu and Tinashe since you're still in uh, psychic communication with this creature you feel the calm uh, deepen okay it's a, seems like they want us over uh, since they're enjoying this, if, if anybody wants a ride, I can just boop us on over on the nightmare. <laughs> that would be helpful. I am probably too small to make that jump. I will fall through space. Okay. Okay. I don't think, are you smaller than I am? Uh, I'm three feet. Because I'm a small size creature. Yeah, I'm small too. So yeah. My 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 athletics is a plus zero. <laughs> Acrobatics? Plus zero. <laughs> Warlock life. I love it. I'm, I'm <laughs> here for it. <laughs> Acacius, you do know that as long as you are in the gravity plane of this Kandori, if you wanted to essentially put the spell jammer in uh hover. It will stay there if you wanted to join, or you could stay in the spell jammer and perhaps do other things. I, I would like to join um, on the Kandoris. I'd like to ride the Kandori. I love it. All right, gather around Prince of Sparkle Tufts. <laughs> are all and of you getting on the nightmare or are some of you doing the jump by yourself? How, what are you doing? I'm gonna do the jump. I love it. Uh, I'm gonna have the nightmare. Ethereal stride you over there. <laughs> Well, I'm also I'm I'm like a very large medium sized creature. Yeah, gif gif have some some that's true gifiness. Uh, okay, real quick, what does ethereal stride do? I pop into uh, the ethereal plane, and then I'm gonna fly my ninety feet and reemerge on the material plane because I don't know if Tanache needs to breathe or if my nightmare needs to breathe. Uh, I don't. You don't, your nightmare, who knows, it's a created creature out of nothing. Tanache does, however, you, the envelope of air around the ship and the Kindori have merged enough that you are going to be fine. However, that was you, a Jess problem, not a Lilu problem. <laughs> nope, but what I, like, what I like about that is if you use that and Tanache's on the back of your nightmare, you don't have to roll. You just, and then, yeah, on the back of the Kindori, Acacius. Give me an athletics or an acrobatics check to join your friends on the Kandori. I got a 21. Nice. Athletics or acrobatics? Athletics. I love I it. Plus seven in advantage on athletics, so that's what I'm going with. <laughs> Perfect. You, you watch as everybody launches over the Kandori. You put the damselfly in the autopilot. I know there's not autopilot and spell jammer. Don't come at me. And then you <laughs> launch yourself across <laughs> towards this massive, gorgeous creature landing. Once again, your two hippo feet just solidly landing on top of the molted skin of this Kindori. And now all of you can't help but feel the rumble in your gut. Like your internal organs are just very gently vibrating with this <laughs> also, as this happens, Cax, something about that having your friends around you fills you with a little bit of extra energy. Go ahead and oh. roll me a D100. Oh, it's time. All right. Let's see, 34. 34. Um, um, 
you're seeing glitter coming out of some of your friends and rainbows coming out of your friends and you're on top of your uh, massive goat with butterfly wings and mm-hmm. uh, something about the way the butterfly wings are just naturally vibrating as the the resonance emits from the kindori makes it almost look like the fluttering of butterflies and suddenly you and your goat are surrounded by illusory butterflies and flower petals which flutter in the air around you <laughs> within 10 feet and you are just Ooh. kind of just enough to be beautiful and ethereal but not enough to like uh, get in the way of your vision just <laughs> monarchs right. and flower petals everywhere Become one with the Feywild, everyone. <laughs> I have the power to do this. <laughs> Let's go, Kindori, and like try to make the butterflies fly out in front of me to make like you know to illuminate uh, OG's path and the stars to further like make it look appealing to the Kindori. If that's a thing I can do, I, I love it. I love it. You need to move up to the top of this Kindori's head in order to make your your right. butterflies yeah. do this, and then. Just galloping on the goat, like, I, I have one with the fae. <laughs> you, you watch as Cax then gallops off towards the head of this creature. Um, I need you to make me, when you get to the head, an arcana check to see if you can harness the magic power of the fae wild here in wild space to make these illusory butterflies uh, bend to your will. <laughs> Oof, all right. Uh, that's a nine. Uh, Twelve. <laughs> With a 12, they get about, you push them forward and they kind of end up hovering just in front of the Kindori's nose. (laughs) Kind of like carrot and stick uh, on the front of an animal. Uh, It's just like right here. You're not sure if it's helping, but the Kindori seems to be enjoying it at least. (laughs) And as long as you stay on the, the prow of this whale, you will continue to be able to have your illusory butterflies out there. How about the rest of you? What are you doing? Um. I love that moment where I ask my players, what are you doing? And everyone's like, we're on the back of a space whale in the middle of wild space. I don't know. Oh God, here we go. (laughs) We're shooting all kinds of things out of us. I don't know what we do. Yeah, I mean, I think it's continuing to try and steer them back onto the path. Okay. You get the sense they're they're calm, and now that this one that you've all landed on is calm, it's propagating towards the others, and so they're they're now a little more receptive to encouragement, deterrence, um, something else. But they're they're still moving away from the sun. I mean, now would be a good time for Chet to donate $25 so my Kindori can roll again right. because, you know, so, why not? Why so, not? So, so, so. Here is, so. Here is what I would like to do. Hit me. I would like to use a combination of precedentations and firebolts to make um, flashes of of light and everything to guide them, to continue to guide them the way we want them to go. Okay, so kind of taking the shooting star that OG has made and adding to it so that it is... Yes. Okay, give me either a performance or an arcana check. Arcana's better, so let's do Arcana. Sure. That's why I like giving options. 22. Ooh. All right. Oh, dang. Um, from out of the front of this Kindori, where the butterflies are, in the direction of the shooting star, which is basically it goes out and it angles around at U-turns. Which is something a shooting star can do, because why not? It's wild space. You use your prestidigitation to make your uh, firebolt do the same thing and trace the same path. And it's there's something about the fiery color that Lilu, you you because uh, Tanashi is kind of concentrating on this. Lilu, you feel through the connection that, it reminds the Kindori of 
fire, sun, ooh, food, and a couple of its eyes follow uh, Oji's shooting star and then this fire, and it looks back towards the sun. And now you feel the rumble and you sense the hunger of this creature. And it starts to turn. And as it turns, the others near it start to turn. And as the the whales are turning back and you're feeling that, oh, this is this is working. This is starting to work. It's it they're calm now, and now they've been reminded of, hey, look, there's food over there. You know, there's no more danger. There's there's food over there. Everybody give me a perception check. Uh oh. Dirty 20. Got a six. Eight. All right. There's uh, 18. Eight. All right. Lilu and Kax, as all this is going on, everybody else is kind of watching the pod as they turn because it's, it's very majestic. And standing on top of this creature is kind of the best seats in the house to watch it. But Lilu and Cax think to look where you're going instead of where you are. And you see in the distance a very familiar space galleon streaking in your direction. And you have, you have what you think are a minute or two before it arrives, but it's gaining on you fast. Is it bigger or smaller than the whales? That is an excellent question. I should know that off the top of my head. Um, Space Galleon is... Whales are like 80 feet. Yeah, they're huge. They're, they're super huge. Um, yeah. This is... 130 feet. Okay. Okay, they're bigger. They're about the... Well, and these are huge Kandori. They're about the same size. The, okay. the Galleon is the same size as one of these Kandori. A couple of them are a little smaller, um, but there's six Kandori and one Galleon, but it is, it's about the same size. Does our ship have any sort of like cannons or projectile weapons on it? Absolutely. Uh, the Damselfly ship has a ballista and um, mang manganel, um, both of them are ready to go. They've been repaired and refitted because originally the space pirates are going to use them to go after the Kandori, but it absolutely has some armaments on it. Uh, Being that no one... Oh, oh Pirates go ahead. ahoy. Yes, I was going to point out Pirates ahoy. Still got to deal with them, apparently. How Thoughts? far away are they? Uh, Lilu will just go There. And if they're close enough, are they within 60 feet? Can I fairy fire them so everyone can see them? They're not within 60 feet because uh, they're far enough away that you've got like a minute or two to plan. Um, but but I'll let you know when they're within 60 feet so that you, you can let me know when fire. they're within 120 because I can guiding bolt them to start us off. I will um, let you know okay. that too. Yep. And I uh, actually remind me what does guiding bolt do? It's going to do damage, and then it'll also um, give advantage to the next attack made on them. Okay, so uh, that doesn't actually help. So when they're 150 feet, let me know, and I will fireball them at third level. Oh, All wow. right. Uh, uh, Acacius, you were asking about the armaments on the damselfly ship. Would you like to go back to your ship and take take control of the ship again? All right. Uh, I'm going to say now that you've made the jump once, the jump back is not a big deal. Uh, you're going to take a, a few moments, get back into the uh, spell jamming helm. Um, you do know you need someone to fire the ballista in the mangonel. You cannot fire them yourself. You can position the ship in a... Uh, optimal place, but you're going to need one of your friends to fire the fire the cannons, as it were. I will let somebody know my plan then. Um, possibly Cax, because I think the other three have stuff yeah. um, prepped for when they get close enough. Um, so maybe if you wanted to come back over, um, we could 
position the ship and get the ballista ready. Yeah, see any others start prepping their spells and just look at the arrows on my pack and the giant ship and like be like, yeah, good idea, Acacia. I'm coming with you. <laughs> and I'll hop over to where the ballista and Manganel are. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, same thing, your goat, it's it's easy. Now that you've done this jump once, you head on back. <laughs> you do know your arrows would work against people on the galleon. Yeah. So if you did want to be sniping people, that would work. But if you wanted to actually go after some some big guns, the ballista and the mangonel. And um, yeah, I'm gonna say your goat is gonna help you reload. Yes. <laughs> you, you can use, you, you, your goat will be able to help you reload because it's funny. All right. <laughs> Um, anything else that anybody wants to do in prep before I suddenly say that this galleon is within striking distance? I have a, a, a very, very weird thing I want to do. Yes! Hit me. Um, I would like to prepare to cast a wall of thorns, which I would like to then awaken. <laughs> okay! All right! Okay! Spell jammer! I love it. Why yeah. not? I love it. Okay. How close do you have to be to awaken... So uh, that is touch, and the Wall of Thorns has to be, is a 120-foot range. Okay, so. so you gotta cast it, and then you gotta touch your Wall of Thorns. Yeah. All right, okay, okay. Where would you, when this happens, where would you like to place the Wall of Thorns? I want to protect the Kindori, so up to, right in front of the, maybe sort of wrapping around the helm of the Galleon. Sort of okay. wherever they're navigating from. Okay. Here's what I'm going to say. You'll need to be on the damselfly ship because Acacius is going to need to be able to move you in a way in where you could cast this and then be within touching distance of your own wall. Because you don't think it. the Kindori, you don't have a clear enough line of communication with the whales in order to get that fine of a control. But if you're you're on the damselfly ship and you let Acacius know what you want to do, I will help make this happen. Um, yeah, I mean, I can even make it weirder, which is I can throw a druid craft on there to get a tendril of a vine that reaches me so that I can basically have an extension cord to cast my touch. <laughs> all right. Nice. Um, How weird okay, can on. we make this? I mean, I'm here before for all of this. They get, before they get that close, though, could I do the fireball? So oh, I yes. don't hit my Please, party. I want that to happen. <laughs> yeah, we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to okay. give you... Uh, we're going to roll initiative in just a second, but I'm going to make sure order of operations here happen. Yeah, I'll delay my action okay. until after your, yeah. your fireball goes off. All right, I just didn't want to hit you all. <laughs> Nope, that's that's totally fair. Okay, so we got uh, OG Cax and Acacius on the Damselfly ship getting ready to do all sorts of funness. We've got uh, Tanache and Lilu. You're still on the Kindori getting ready to do all sorts of funness. Was there anything else anyone wanted to prepare before I make y'all roll initiative? All right. Then I guess it's time for y'all roll initiative. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Thirteen. Um, campaign. I just got way too excited about an initiative roll. That was a twenty-one. <laughs> nice. And seventeen. All right, hold on just a second. I'm gonna have to get those numbers again because uh, this is this is an encounter I was not expecting. Um, uh, Apogee, what'd you get? Seventeen. Seventeen and uh, Tanache. Ten. And Cax. 13. And Acacius. Got 18. 18. And Lilu. 21. 21. Okay. Let's see what the Kindori get. Uh, they got a 13. And let's see what the Galleon gets. Uh, the galleon got a 15. So the first up is going to be Acacius, and then Apogee, you are on deck. And I will say, since all of you know what each, each other's plans are, if you want to hold your action, I will let you do that. So, uh, Acacius, what would you like to do? I think I'm going to start moving the ship closer towards, like, on the way towards the galleon um, so that uh, OG can be within range to do the 
extension cord um, to the Wall of Thorns, um, and also positioning it so that uh, Cax has a clear line of sight from the ballista to the galleon. Awesome. I also just now realized, Lilu, that you were actually supposed to go first, but we're going to make this work. So Acacius is uh, taking the ship, and because damselflies are so fast, you just poof off and very quickly close the distance with this galleon, which is probably good because you you all kind of know you don't want this galleon to get too close to the Kandori because they'll just turn around and go away again. Um so, Acacius, you're, are you using your whole turn to just move towards the galleon to get into uh, the appropriate place for everybody? I love it. I love it. All right. So, Lilu, it is your turn. How far are they right now? How far do you need them to be? Um. Well, I know the fireball was supposed to happen before 90 feet, but I can do 180 feet if you will accept this strange plan that I have. I mean, everything that I require from all of you to be absolutely raw, <laughs> I'm not taking any liberties on anything. So sell me on your plan. <laughs> okay. So for my plan uh, at this point, knowing that they are going to be fireballed, I assume, I would like to hop on my nightmare and uh, I'm still on the nightmare. So absolutely. fly. 90 feet out uh so that i can then cast um web on the uh on the uh the oh no wait, fireball will kill that i meant entangle on the thing so that they will be stuck uh the galleon will be stuck and not as easily able to dodge a fireball and also take damage and slow down its flight path all right. Okay, so I would, you're leaping off the Kandori to do this. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, on my nightmare. All right. All right. Um, that is my action. Okay. But then I have other tricks as well. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say, so leaping off, absolutely, because you're just going in the general direction. Uh, you don't need to breathe. Your magic space hamsters on tiny little nightmares don't need to breathe. <laughs> you find yeah. out the nightmare doesn't need to breathe, but the fire on top of the nightmare does dim. Just a little bit. Okay. It, it's just, it's not as impressive. It's just a little. Um, you start moving in that direction. Uh, web, is that an attack roll or a saving throw? Or not web, I was doing entangles. Entangle. So it is a saving throw. So instead of a saving throw, here's what I want. Give me a spell attack from you. Okay. Oh, that's an at 20. Yay. Yeah. With an so at 20. A 26. Um, go, so is there damage that's associated with this or is it just? Uh, what it is, is, uh, it, uh, makes white vines and weeds sprout. Uh, the ground is difficult to rain and they have to succeed on a strength save or be restrained until I drop the spell. I'm going to say, since you rolled the natural 20, they are all, all the people on the ship and the ship are going to fail their dexterity saving throw. And so you watch as vines and roots, Apogee, you, you think this is perfect. This is going to help you with your vo with your wall. Crawl along the galleon. You can all hear the wood of this ship creak and crack as the, the entangle takes hold. And yeah, it works. You are now floating out in space. Anything else you would like to do? Uh, yeah, as a bonus action, or I guess this isn't even a bonus action. This is just when I hit it as a thing. Uh, I'm going to mark it as my favored enemy so that I will do more damage to it and sure. also have my swarm pull it forward <laughs> 15 <laughs> oh, feet. Wow. Describe how a bunch of hamsters on flaming horses pull a galleon. <laughs> Well, it's entangled in the vines, so obviously they're going to use the vines as little harnesses. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like a scene out of Cinderella, these little tiny hamsters <laughs> all of a sudden grab hold of these vines and start pulling this massive galleon uh, towards its destruction. Anything else? Uh, because it is my favorite foe, it's taking two damage. Okay. And you hear more creaking happen. Apogee. It is your turn. Um, 
So the fireball has not gone off yet or it has? Not just sorry, not yet. yet. Then I am going to, to delay my turn in the order until after that. Perfect. And uh, for the sake of, because you knew this was happening, I'm going to let you delay your entire turn, movement and yep. bonus action as well. Uh, it is the galleon's turn. You hear the wood creak. You hear people on top of the ship shouting at each other. Now you can see while the crew of the damselfly that you've taken over were all these plant creatures, the galleon is a motley crew of all sorts of pirates. And the captain that you had heard over the the stone that connected the two ships is visible as this gith yanky tall lean with this horrible scar across their face and a sneer and you don't hear what they're saying but they're pointing at you um and it's gonna fire on the on the damsel fly and you watch as uh, one of the ballista take a shot. Um, and so, Acacius, what I'm going to tell you is that your armor class is 19 and you have 200 hit points. Uh, and that the galleon does hit. And you, your ship... Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, it, your ship is going to take 16 piercing damage um, as a bolt just goes flying through the back of your ship. You don't feel any pain yourself, but it's almost the memory of pain. It's, it's like you know what has happened to your ship because you're kind of an extension of it right now. It's an extension of you. And so while it it's... It's the memory of that ouch, even though there's no actual pain. Um, and then it is Cax. Cax, you have been moved into range by Acacius. How far are we from the galleon? Um, About? You're, uh, how far do you need to be? <laughs> yeah. I'm deciding between Chorpo and Ballista, so is it greater than 80? Uh, it is... Probably, I imagine. It is, I'm going to say it is 80 feet. So you could you could do feet. either if you wanted. You could right. either do the ballista can or I, your arrows. Can I see the captain? Yes. You said a step on deck. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to go actually for, with my short bow, uh, and aim right for the captain. I love it. So I'll just take two arrows, short bow. Um, you see this like glittery butterfly wing short bow, uh, magic short bow come out of his, and then these two arrows as he's still riding the goat. And I say, all right, steady, Ellery, steady. And then, whew, uh, launch two arrows at the captain. I love it. Let's see, short bow. It's okay. One is a 19 and one's a dirty 20. Both hit. All right. Uh, the Kandori are on deck and then Tanashi, it's going to be your turn. Prep your fireball. Prep right. your epic fireball. I'm ready for I'm it. I'm going to use, make this a bursting arrow on one of these hits. So All right. as it hits the captain, it explodes and creatures within 10 feet uh, take an extra 2d6 force damage each. Okay. I'm going with explosive arrows to knock this captain down. There we go. So it's a 10. Oh, wow. Two ones. So a two. So a 10 for damage on the actual arrow to the captain. Okay. Oh, uh, here. 12. 12 damage on the captain. And then the explosive arrow does an extra two to anything awesome. 10 feet around it. Uh, yeah, your arrow grabs hold of its chest of this Gith Yankee captain, and you watch it explode, and all of the crew around not only take this damage, but the force almost shoves a bunch of them off the ship, but they're able to hold on. The, the captain themselves is pushed towards the edge, but grabs hold of the, the banister right there and sneers across wild space at you. Anything else? You know, uh, since I see that happen, I'm gonna action surge and do it again. Yes, you are. <laughs> Try Absolutely, and launch the captain you are. into space. So, see, the, I just gotta look back at the captain, like steer back, kind of grin back at him, and just two more. I love it. All right. Oh, nice. Okay, so another dirty twenty and a twenty-four. Both hit. All right. So, let's see, that's eight, 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 sixteen on the captain. Okay. And I'll make it, you know what, make it my last arcane shot to make another exploding arrow. All right. Just to really knock him off the ship. I'm going to let him so. do a dexterity saving throw to see if he stays. <laughs> um, 
And yeah. that's a disadvantage because he's restrained. Well, the excellent part about this is um, he rolled a six on his first oh, roll. So the disadvantage <laughs> doesn't even come into play as, yeah, <laughs> Cax describe. You don't. He's not dead or knocked out, but he does get shoved off the ship. Just describe what happens as the captain yeah. <laughs> gets shoved off the, sh- the galleon. So as he's at holding the railing, I'll just like take one last uh, quick shot, like aim real fast and psh, right in the railing. The arrow embeds itself in the railing where the captain's holding on and then pff, it explodes, the arcane arrow, loosing him from the ship and sending him cast out into space. And you you hear a Wilhelm scream as he tumbles through wild space. <laughs> Uh, anything else on your turn? Uh, no, that's it. It's just a satisfied smile. All right. The goat. It is the Kandori's turn. They have been given a roll on the wild table. So, Cax, since you just went, would you roll that D100? After oh, the Kandori, yes. it will be Tanache, and then Apogee's held action will go off. Ooh, a four. With a four. Cax, it's a, it's a good thing. I think you're the only one with a physical weapon right now because you've got your bow and you've got the mm-hmm. ballista. Everybody else is rocking magic, aren't you? So it's kind of I've appropriate. I've got a great axe, but I don't. I, I have it out, but I'm not really doing anything with it because I'm doing because I'm holding stuff. multiple weapons. I just yeah. have many hands. Okay. Yeah. Then, <laughs> all of you who are holding physical weapons. Um, whether you immediately notice it because you are literally shooting arrows from it or not. Um, they all turn to bread. All of your weapons bread. are now bread versions of your weapons. <laughs> oh no, my hamsters right. are going to eat my bow. <laughs> That's the- oh, there's there's the bread. <laughs> Fortunately, the Kandori don't have weapons, but weapons within a sixty foot radius of the Kandori turn to food for one minute. So uh, all your weapons are bread. <laughs> Fortunately, Tanache, you're about to shoot a fireball, so it has nothing to do with bread. Yes. Well, thank God I so... flew 90 feet away. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> nice. So, uh, Tanache um, pulls out with um, one of the lower hands a couple, some components um, of, of sulfur and guano and starts rubbing them around the orb and they start to sizzle and pop as an orb grows from from the orb grows this fire and shoots forth a fireball towards the um ship so it and everyone um within 20 feet within a 20 foot radius of the ship needs to make a dexterity 13 save on a um, on a successful save, they'll take, f- they'll take 15 on a, um, unsuccessful save. They'll take 30. Okay. Fire damage. It also ignites anything flammable that's not being worn or carried. So if there's guns or things like that, that are, uh, gunpowder based or flammable oily based, that would ignite. I love that. Cause I was just starting to wonder. So the ship succeeded but a bunch of the people on the ship failed. So <laughs> I was just starting to wonder, yep. okay, if the ship made the dexterity saving throw, is the wood on the ship considered being worn or carried? I don't know. But you know what? You're mentioning gunpowder and oil and all sorts of flammable things on the deck. So the ship doesn't really take that much damage. It's so huge and well-made. And even though it's made out of wood, it's uh, treated really well. And so you see a scorch mark on it. But the top of the galleon goes as multiple people and multiple very flammable things on the top of a ship go up in raucous fire. And uh, is there anything else you want to do or is that the end of your turn? Um, That was my action. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to bonus action gloat. And then I'm done. (laughs) Bonus action gloat. Uh, you know, <laughs> gloating is a free action. I love it. <laughs> as as uh, your Thrycreen friend gleefully gloats, uh, Apogee, you've been holding your turn. You see the fireball go off. That is your your literal. Uh, <laughs> that it's your turn. What would you like to do? Yeah. Which I kind of uh, know already. So, yeah, I'd like to send off the the wall of thorns. Okay. Uh, that I was preparing. Uh, doing in case the. 
the, the front of the ship, of the ship right? Yep. What's uh, the saving throw it needs to make? Or is it a saving it's, throw or is it It's a... a dexterity 14 to take half damage, I believe. Okay. And if it saves, it's not entangled or does it get entangled no matter what? Uh, so it's... It will... Uh, it can move through the wall by spending four feet of movement for every one foot. And every time it enters the wall or ends its turn there, it has to take the same damage okay it does make so. the save but it will take half damage and then did it save at disadvantage which, oh it did not still entangled you're right oh, you're wow. right it is still entangled uh well that is a six so now it fails okay, so it's going to take 28 points of damage Ooh, okay as that goes off and then you want to make it alive i i would like to make it alive um but i do I, you know what? I can't make, I can't make it alive. I'm out of charges on my staff. I just realized I don't have enough to. You know what? This is that. such an epic oh. thing. I don't care. <laughs> Here's what I do need. Okay. It's going to happen. You suddenly have an extra charge in your staff, but you do need to be. Weird. It recharged in the light of the sun. Absolutely. It's, it's <laughs> the Kindori have suddenly made it happen. But here is Thanks, what. Thanks, Kindori. Here's what I need. because you Power need to, bread. <laughs> yes, the power of bread compels you. It is your bread staff now. Turning to bread <laughs> gave it another bread charge. Stick. Absolutely. There's butter on your bread. You don't know why. Acacius, <laughs> I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw so that Apogee can be close enough to her wall to make it alive, but not so close that she gets caught up in her own wall. Can I use the... Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. Need your sense to get advantage. Uh, I need you to say that again because you froze up for a second. Can you okay. use what? Danger sense because I add uh, to give advantage as a barbarian. Absolutely. Ooh. I love it. I love it. Especially since you know it's coming. Right. right. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. 18. With an 18, the ship rolls in space, flying incredibly fast towards this galleon wrapped in vines and thorns and apogee. You reach up with one hand and just very gently, Oops, just one <laughs> finger, all of a sudden th this wall of vines has a snoot. It, I have learned this from my friend Lilu. It's <laughs> the the front of the wall of vines because it's, in case, it's encasing the front of the ship almost looks like a little snout. Did you boop the snoot boop. and you awaken these vines? I, I do. Uh, okay. Three more friends in a battle. Uh, this is so cool. Uh, <laughs> so. I'm flying. <laughs> you are indeed. What um, am I doing? Help. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Would you like to so, give <laughs> Yeah, I just want to encourage you to help our, our friends. There is a greater plan at play. What's uh, the plan? The plan is to make sure that these people aboard the ship you're hugging right now <gasps> don't hurt poor people. I will hug all the ship. And you watch as <laughs> this now awakened wall of vines in the middle of wild space wraps big thorns around the galleon. You Sometimes hear, even ships need hugs. You hear the, the crunching of wood <laughs> and the screaming of pirates as the Kindori float by. And just as you're watching this, it looks like a at this point, a ball of vines and thorns and leaves kind of on fire in the distance and still hearing your awakened uh your awakened wall going Hans, as you all <laughs> say the sail, power of mayonnaise compels you <laughs> <laughs> as you all sail with the bounty back towards the planet you watch as your star 
flares and just as the first wave of energy is about to hit your planet, the Kindori just float very gently into the path and you watch their eyes light up as they feast on the energy coming off of your star, leaving your planet safe. And you've won D and D. Congratulations, everybody! Yay! You have Yay! saved the Kindori. You've saved the planet, all with the it's help given of them nannies. snacks. Given them snacks. <laughs> the power of snacks. And we have also you. raised one thousand two hundred and fifteen dollars so far. Nice. Well done. Take this. Well done. Take Thank this. you, chat. Take this. Thank you so much to chat. Take this as the real winners here. Uh, let's take a quick moment and um, thanks to all of our players and give you a moment to tell everybody where more of your awesomeness will be found. We'll go in the opposite order of, uh, I, I was just about to say Cax, but uh, Sergio, <laughs> where can people yes. find more of you? Absolutely, yeah. I'm on Twitter as my name, Sergio Solorzano, or on Start Playing, uh, startplaying.games. Just search for Sergio. I'm like one of the three guys named Sergio on that platform, so you should find a picture of me there. And I'm running games all weekdays, so yeah, um, I'm doing Radiant Citadel one-shots right now, Ooh. and those are like, yeah, super fun. Um, loving Fiend of Hollow Mine, one of my favorites to run, so yeah, look for that, and that's where I am. Thank you. And Fendway? Mm -hmm. Everyone, I am Fenway Jones, also known as Fenway the Team DM on Twitter and at Jasper's Game Day on all the social medias. And you can find me there. You can find me, um, you know, doing all of the Jasper's Game Day stuff and, and helping out take this whenever I can. Thank you. And Jess? Hey, I'm Jess. It was a blast playing Lilu. I am Miss underscore Jess03 on Twitter and Green Earth Girl on Twitch. And you can see me tomorrow at 9 p.m. on Phoenix Wikis channel where we are starting a brand new all evil campaign, The Hunger oh. of Thin. Uh, we are going to lend this cool dude Vecna a hand and uh, keep an eye out for anything that might be a danger to him. I'm playing an incredibly fat spirit bard tabaxi. Uh, who is a druid school dropout turned a uh, spirit bard. And you can see me every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Angry Nerd Girl, where I run Three Flings, the only show on Twitch with three level 20 tieflings venturing through the entirety of Uncaged Goddesses, uh, all of Uncaged Anthology, actually. And we only have four adventures left out of 121. So oh, wow. join us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And Cassie. Hi. I'm Cassie. Um, I am a licensed clinical social worker and a clinical contributor with Take This. So thank you all yeah. for your donations. They help keep me employed. Um, <laughs> and employed doing find... excellent work. Yes. You can find me at Mental Woke on Twitter. Um, in I am um, coordinating the next in our series of identity and gaming mental health panels for September. It is going to be September um, 17th, Saturday, September 17th. Um, and that is going to be the Latina panel. So please make sure mark your calendars, be on the lookout for socials um, as we start to get ready to uh, promote that. So yeah. Excellent, thank you. And Jen. Yeah, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Um, Mondays on my channel, Tuesdays on Children of Erte, along with Lauren and some other really wonderful folks. Um, Wednesdays, I am a vampire on Play Renegade's channel. Uh, Fridays, I am also again with Lauren uh, as we play through some uh, journey through the Radiant Citadel on Radiant Stories for, for Never Ending on Be Never Ending. Um, I'm an author. I'm the creator of the Accessibility and Gaming Resource Guide. I am a performer. I do all sorts of things, but um, check out my pinned tweet for more. Excellent. Thank you. And I'm Lauren Urban. Nice. I've been your humble DM for this ridiculous, ridiculous Saving the Whale story. Thank you to <laughs> everyone who donated to uh, help us raise money for this amazing cause and cause chaos. Thank you to all of my players who are fantastic and ran with all of the chaos I threw at them. Thank you to <laughs> Keith for being our moderator in chat and for helping out, especially when I was panicking over trying to run the giveaways. Thank you to Total Party Chill for all of where we are and hosting all of this and thank you to Dr. Ralph Bocamazzo and TakeThis.org for being awesome. I hope you had a lot of fun. Stick around. There's more games on the way, but we will see you next encounter. Bye. <laughs>